shall we lift up our two hands to heaven and give him thanks again for the privilege to see the first Sunday in the month of November, the season where God is crowning the year with his goodness, where all his parts are dropping fatness. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I ask him to speak to you this morning, every one of us. Jesus, I'm waiting for a word from you, my own word, that will open a new chapter to my life. In Jesus, Precious name, we have prayed. Amen. The same way that young man got liberated from 27 years of captivity, there are people here today, no matter how long you have been held in bandage, you are walking back home with liberty. Amen. Now we have a challenge here. Proximity to an anointed man or woman of God is both an advantage and a disadvantage. You get so used to what they carry that they don't impact on your life anymore. Proximity to an anointed is a risk. Risk in the sense that people just lose their portion in what they carry. Somebody touched me, he said. And Peter said, we are all strong in you, nothing is happening. Says virtue has gone out of me. It didn't reach them. But somebody was longing. I must take my portion. He had the word, gave his life to Christ. Right there, a word, a statement of words and prayer, just loosed him. And now here he is, this morning. No matter what may have heard you, man, pay attention today as if this is your first time of being here. That's what will help you. I'm also told some fellows just talk during services. It's all carnality. You came to church and you are greeting people along the line. I mean, how could I even know what you are writing? Whether you are writing a letter to a friend or you are browsing in the name of holding a piece. Over to you. I know God sent me, and I know what he sent me to do. But today, as the Lord lives, whatever chain has had anybody bound in this service, whether online or on ground, wherever, Jesus, who sent me, will lose you. He smoked anything, drank anything. Same time, same sweep. God saved, God liberated from courtism, and God liberated from desecration, defilement. All in one sweep. Today is somebody's day in this place. Some are so carnal to think that we even are in testimony. They think so. In their carnal mind, their defiled mind, their corrupted conscience. Have I ever seen that person in my life? No. Will I know if I see him after service? No. No testimony has ever been doctored in this place for 41 years. No testimony has ever been doctored. No testimony has ever been doctored. When you see us read testimonies, we read testimonies that are in line with the teaching. That's what makes us read testimonies. We have testimonies every day. But we read testimonies in line with the teachers. There are times we have 30 testimonies, 40 testimonies. They are no makeup. You better wake up. You better wake up. Heaven is real. Yes. You miss it, you weep for eternity. No one will miss it here. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. No one will miss it here. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. You will never miss your steps. Yeah. 
you will make it to the end. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Please, ushers, make available, please, that's it, please. Make available to anyone that may not have any of these two pieces. The one circulated last Sunday, declaring the prophetic focus for the month. And Shiloh 2022 Intercessory Prayer Guidelines, you can make that available. Not when the word starts, please. When the word starts, sit down and receive the word. When it's time for altar call, you can do that at the same time. Jesus is Lord. Now, understanding, now, the prophetic focus for the month is sanctification secures destiny and eternity. Can we say that together? For all that can read, it's a must to read that thing today, if you have not read it. It's a must, or return it. If you have not read it, please return it. Please, please. We are not displaying wealth. We are transmitting life. If you won't read it, please return it. And if you won't pray, don't collect as any prayer guidelines. Don't. Don't. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. The times of playing games will be over in your life. The night is fast spent. Yes. The night is fast spent. Religion won't add value to your life. It's a quality work with God that does. Religion will never add value to anybody's life. Otherwise, ask me those religious fanatics who are killing people all around. What value has he added to them? What value? Let's sit up. Let's sit up. Let's sit up. The end is so close. Let's sit up. Unbearable fire is about burning. Let's sit up. Let's sit up. Let's take cover in the covenant. Let's take delight in obeying God. Christianity is not about prosperity, it's about eternity. Prosperity, healing, health, they are all characteristics of what eternity offers. But if you miss eternity, you have lost everything. Thank you, Jesus. Understanding pathways to sanctification. First, we understand sanctification is the will of God. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should obtain, abstain from fornication and all other vices. It is the will of God. And when we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Sanctification is the will of God. And we make demand for it among others on the altar of prayer. First John 5, 14 and 15. By way of introduction, one we must arise and wage war against spiritual slumber. It is the platform that causes defilement to thrive. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Romans 11, 8, please. According as written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. So that's indicative of the spirit of slumber as one of the foul spirits that causes men to crash. 
The spirit of Solomon is a foul spirit, not able to see, not able to hear. Jesus in the parable of the wheat and the tears said, Why men slept? His enemy came and sowed tears. Evil thoughts. Degenerating to evil acts. Why men slept? Evil thoughts were sowed into their lives. And evil acts follow. Mark, man, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 24 to 26. But why men slept? His enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. He took advantage of that slumber, that sleepy state. He wakes up in the morning, the wife is no good. No. I can't cope with this woman. She's behind all my challenges. Now that I'm free from the challenges, let me go and marry somebody else. He went and sowed tears and went his way. Mark 7, 21 to 23. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts. How did they get there? Why he slept? Adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy and foolish, pride and foolishness. All these evil vices come from within and defy the man. As we all know, no sleepy driver ever drives safe on the highway. Most of the accidents during festive periods are just direct products of sleepy drivers on the steering. Awake that thou sleepers is a risk. And arise from the dead is a deadly risk. And Christ shall give thee light. This morning, I command every spirit of slumber, spiritual slumber, to get out of anyone's life that they head down in the name of Jesus. Suddenly, the thing you used to believe, you start disbelieving them. They have added value to you, but you start dropping them. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's a victim of the spiritual slumber. And things stop working, and they keep going down and down, yet he can't recover himself. Well, that's like, it can't be all bright. There are black spots anywhere, which you created. This minister has never known a black spot. Black spot, 41 years to the glory of God. From today, your life will never experience any more black spots. In the same vein, every believer in the state of slumber is undertaking a deadly risk. The enemy can sow any kind of seed in there. Most crises that believers suffer can be traceable to spiritual slumber. First Peter chapter 4 verse 15 and 16. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet, if any man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God because he's coming out of it. So those evil vices are behind the sufferings of the people of God. And the better we know that. We must stay spiritually awake to drive safe on the highways of the kingdom. First Corinthians 15 and verse 34. I 
awake to righteousness and say not. For some have not the knowledge of God, and I speak this to your shame. Awake to it, there will never be a day where righteousness will no longer be required. Everyone that fears God fares well in life. F A R E. He fears well. F A R E. He fears. He does good. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delights himself greatly in his commandments. His seed also shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the all of the all price shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Is righteousness endured forever. Everyone that operates in the fear of God does well in life. So from henceforth, life will begin to answer to you favorably. A state of spiritual slumber is a deadly state because a sleepy man is defenseless. It's defenseless. And the Bible says the enemy goes about like a running lion whom you must resist steadfastly. You can't resist nothing in a sleepy state. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 21. You can't resist, you can't overcome in a sleepy state. Therefore, as the prophet said, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. This day must be a most memorable day to date in your life. Yeah. Because every shake, shake, every ajaga, that you came you to church, every bandage, every captivity that follow you to church today will not go back home with you. God will not tell us to do what he has not engraced us to do, neither will he ask us to be what he has not empowered us to be. This is the love of God that we Keep his commandments. His commandments are not grievous. It's not out to punish. It's ever out to polish us, decorate us. Be ye holy from unholy. He's packaged us for that. He conquered sin for us on the cross. So we can live your commerce life on the earth. Jesus said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your heavenly father is perfect. So that's our goal. We shall get there. Amen. But sanctification is a choice and not a gift. I lay before you life and death. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Blessings and curses. Therefore choose life. So it's a choice. Between life and death, blessing and cursing, it's a choice to make. In Matthew 5, 6, the Bible says, Blessed are the day which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So it's not something that will drop on you, it's something you crave for. You crave for it. You crave for it. We said the only the week of emphasis. If we will believe God for sanctification, the same we believe God for healing, for breakthrough, for deliverance, we will, it will be under our feet forever, forever, forever. Yet, the breakthrough we are looking for requires that foundation. Don't work. The love of God is the anchor of every scripture. Every covenant of God anchors on the love of God. And uh, whosoever has my commandment and keeps it, is he that loves me. And you love me, you will love my father, and I will love you, and I will 
manifest myself to you. So keeping his commandments is the biblical proof of our love. And when that happens, he keeps manifesting himself to us. John 14, 21. So it's not, I love you in song. I love you dancing. No. This is the love of God that will keep his commandments. That's the authentic proof of for God. Again, my prayer is that none of us will be head banned in captivity again. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. God will make every one of us to laugh this month. Yeah. Let's look at some cause of ungodliness. Number one, it blocks access to help in times of trouble. When the word came that Isaiah, I mean, Ezekiel was going to die, he said, remember now, O Lord, I have walked before you with a pure heart. Isaiah 35, I mean, 38 and 1 to 5. Isaiah came to Ezekiel and said, get your house in order. Thus said the Lord, uh, for thou shalt die and not live. And then we are told in verse 2. Then as God turned his face towards the wall. You know, the righteous are bold as a liar. Come on now. The wicked man runs when no man pursues him. But the righteous are as bold as a liar. Proverbs 28 verse 1. Then Ezekiah said, remember now, Lord, verse 3, I beseech thee, I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept, is this the reward for you? Is this what should happen? Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, go and say to Ezekiah, Thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I've heard thy prayer. I've seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. You can't fear God and not know. You can't love him and not know. You can't hate evil and not know. He got help in the time of trouble. Psalm 33 and verse 18 to 19. Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. There is global famine now, sir. There is no nation of the world that's not going through one stress or another. They are still struggling to recover from COVID-19. Jobs are lost day and night. But for them that fear the Lord, it will deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Now, not to go far, what is the fear of the Lord? Proverbs 8 and verse 13. Proverbs 8, verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Come on now. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. To hate evil is the cleanest definition of the fear of the Lord. The psalmist cried, send us help, O God, for vain is the help of man. You are attacked in the night. No man is around. In case you are married, your husband has traveled or your wife has traveled. And you are alone in that room. And then hell came to besiege you. There's no man to call. Psalm 102 verse 12. Send us help, O God, for vain is the help of man. Number two, 
cost of ungodliness. It blocks access to divine secrets. We saw from scriptures that all stars are made of access to divine secrets. Divine secret is behind the making of stars in the kingdom. A secret was revealed to Joseph, a magic star in his land of captivity. Divine secret came across to Daniel. The king of the world at that time bowed down and worshipped him. But the fear of the Lord is only with them that fear him. You can't assess the secrets of God without the fear of God at work in your life. You cannot, I cannot, we cannot assess the secrets of God without the fear of God in our heart. We cannot. I've been trading access to divine secrets Consciously, since 76. Most of the things I shared, I had from nowhere, sir, but from heaven. Don't raise money, raise men. And you have more money than we ever need for ministry. 1987. So I'm the worst person to raise offering. And I'm not cheap to give offering to. Yet, I'm prosperous. The secret of God. Hey, boy, I will only build my church, not your church. As simple as that is, it's behind the building of this church. If it's your church, you build it. Unless you can deal with the gates of hell. So you never hear from me till I go to heaven, my church. Under any condition. For I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That might be only one thing missing in a pastor's life. Because it's his church. Oh yes, um, this is my church. I bought two tables last week. And uh, one swivel chair. I'm hoping to buy, you know, uh, air conditioner. And then when I finish buying that, I buy curtains. And uh, I mean, God should be happy with me because I'm doing so much. Divine secrets accessible only to those that work in the fear of God. They are not perfect individuals, yeah. but they tremble at the word of God. Yes. They tremble, they tremble. They don't enjoy evil. In 1979, I was in a place ministering, and then one of those folks, because then we used to have question and answer after preaching. You know, they are not big congregations. If you have 60, that's a whole house. And he said, sir, um, he that kill it and knocks as if he's really a man. I said, okay, start from verse one. <laughs> you, you, you may not understand anything from the middle. Start from the beginning. But unto this man when I look, one with the contrary spirit who trembles at my word. No sacrifice will be a substitute for the fear of God. No sacrifice of a man. So watch it. Somewhat something's happening. If you get at the fear of God as your new lifestyle, watch the events of your life from that time on. There are some today, they can't identify with Jesus outside church premises because of what they will eat. The stickers of the church in their cow is not. Because where they go to, you can't carry that sticker there. And then you expect God, <laughs> my God, to stand out for your help. You are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. I'll be ashamed to help you. Because you may think the other place you are going is where you get the hair from. So hate evil is what the Bible defines as the fear of God. 
Somebody's told is changing. Yes. My prayer, you, that you will remember today for a long time to come. Yes. Among the cause is ungodliness destroys destiny. Remember the love of money is the fear of is, is the root of all evils. First Timothy six ten to twelve. Which some, why some coveted after, they have pierced, they have departed, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I must have it by all means. Whether well, that devilish or that holy can or that woman flee this thing. We saw the destiny of Gehazi destroyed by the love of money. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 10 to 20, and Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, hmm, he lighted from his the chariot to meet him and said, It's all well. Hear what he said. All is well. My master has sent me. Saying, behold, even now there have become to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophet. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of raven or garments. And the man said, oh, be content. Take two talents. Don't take only one. He urged him and he burned two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon two of his servants, and they bear them before him. And you know the story? Gehazi, where comes thou from? He said, from toilet. <laughs> Is it time to receive money? Then landed the judgment. Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman is now your portion. The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, and unto thy seed, and unto thy seed forever. Destruction. It was the crave for money that destroyed the lineage of Achan. All that he had, plus his animals, plus all his, well, just stoned and burned with fire. My God. It destroys destiny. 3,000 Levites were destroyed for the God of gold. They cleft, they cleft to the God of gold till they are destroyed. Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come. They say, we are not on God's side. This gold, we can't let go. We can't let go of this gold. They were gone. The blessings of the Lord, it make it rich and it adds no sorrow. Your life will not suffer any more sorrow. Yeah. Thou shalt have no other God before me, not that you are worshiping idols, worshiping idols. One of the gods we are talking about is the God of gold. You can't serve God and mammon. If your craving life is after money, you have missed God. The good news is that God never holds our past against us, but we only write them off when we truly repent. We only write them off when we truly repent. Whosoever covers his sin shall not prosper. Proverbs 28, verse 13. But whosoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Whatever is blocking your way forward, God will clear it off today by your permission. <laughs> Ezekiel 18, verse 20. Here is the word of the Lord. The soul that sinned shall die, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Now, 21, but if the wicked will turn from his, all his sins that he has committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. 
is waiting for us to turn so we can restore whatever we may have lost. But if the righteous depart from his righteousness and began to do evil, God will forget all the righteousness that he has done. And in that iniquity, in that shall he die. So it's a lifelong demand. And he has given us grace to experience it. As we close, let's look at benefits of sanctification. One sanctification secures all of our inheritance in Christ. Access, secures access to all of our inheritance in Christ. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness of Badiah verse 17, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Holiness, gateway to possessing our possessions. Hebrews 12 and verse 17 for time. Hebrews 12 and verse 17. For ye know that afterward, when you have inherited the blessing, it was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Big caution, please listen. Where sentence against evil is not speedily executed, the heart of the sons of men is set in them to keep doing evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to keep going. Never mistake delayed sentence against evil for justification. Because God is counting. Numbers 14, 23 said this Ten times you have provoked me. Surely you shall not see the lamb, which I swear unto thy fathers. Neither shall any of anyone that provoked me see it. God is counting. Go to 22, please. Because all those men which have seen my glory are my miracles which I did in Egypt and the wilderness and have tempted me now these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice. Ten times. God is counting. God is counting. May he not count ten on anyone's head. Yeah. When you crash in the wrestling ring, they count numbers on your head. You don't jump up. You have lost the battle. One, and don't think that this one follows each other. One, 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 two, 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 three, three, four to power 40. Amen. Five to power 50. God is counting. When he reacts, it's always a risk. God is counting. You know why I know that? Before he turned his back, Solomon had married 300 wives. That's 10. That's God's 10. Each one is 30 times. I tell you, God is still with me. My, I mean, my wisdom is with me. God is pleased with me. If he was not pleased, I married 50 wives, he didn't react. I married 150, he didn't react. And I hit 200. I was singing. 
and he was hearing me. Suddenly, he hit number 10. And God turned his back on him and raised adversaries against him till the day of his death. With all that glory, it's not a remembrance in Israel. Marade ken kakota prata. May number 10 not be counted on your head. Amen. Never mistake the late sentence for justification. You know why God delays? It's not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not slow, as some count slowness, but it's forgiven towards us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter 3 9. Somebody's just nine and a half. Somebody's 9.75. Somebody under my sound is just 9.9, remaining 0.1. In the name of Jesus, today is declared everyone's day of recovery. Yeah. Benefit number two, it enhances answers to our prayers. If I hide iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But now God has heard me. He has acted to the voice of my prayers. You hide iniquity, it blocks access. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, God's hand is not shortened that he could not save. Neither is ear heavy that he cannot hear. But our iniquity, your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So godliness facilitates answers to prayer. We saw it also in the life of Ezekiah. Number three, it procures healing, health, and wholeness. Healing, health, and wholeness. Healing, health, and wholeness. Jesus said to the man at the pool of Bethesda, when they met him the following day, go and say no more. Let's say worse than this happened to you. John 5, 14. Godliness facilitates healing, health, and wholeness. He said to the paralytic man that came down through the roof, thy sins be forgiven thee. Verse 5. And then the Pharisee became very angry and upset. Who are you to forgive sins? He said, now rise, take up thy bed and go home. And they saw what they have never seen before. Sin gave way. Healing, health and wholeness restored. Every challenge that has its root in sin concerning anyone's health, that challenge clears off today. I decree full-blown restoration of everyone's health. Yeah. The biggest of it is secures divine presence. Godliness secures divine presence. Godliness secures divine presence. John 8, 29. He that sent me is with me. My father has not left me alone because I do always those things that please him. I do always, not the things that please me, those things that please him. I do always those things that please him. Coming here didn't please me, but please God. So I came to serve his pleasure, and pleasurably, not can you see now, You can't miss his presence doing what pleases him. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So we don't know what we're missing when we subscribe to anyhow lifestyle. We're missing out of divine presence, missing out of um, 
divine health, missing out of answers to prayers, and missing out of assets to our inheritance in Christ. As we conclude, keys to sanctification. One, we must propose to live a sanctified life. It begins to a purpose. Daniel purpose in his heart. Enough is enough. I refuse to defy myself with the king's rich mate. Daniel 1 8. And Daniel 6, verse 4, there was nothing found against him, for he was a faithful man. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was a faithful man, neither was there any error or fault found in him. That's the power of purpose. The purpose in his heart to please God. And you saw how he prospered. Bible historian said for 65 years, he was a man relevant to the government of Babylon. Three kings came and went. He was there. Two, we must watch and pray to stay sanctified. Peter thought it was not necessary. Watch and pray that you fall into temptation. He went with bold face and was floored by a little girl, not a soldier. Watch and pray. Very importantly, mentioned yesterday in our leadership empowerment summit, the Jesus prayer pattern is designed for daily engagement. When you say, give us this day our daily bread, it goes to validate that every item on that prayer pattern is for daily engagement. Lead us not into temptation, daily engagement. Deliver us from evil, daily engagement. Give us this day our daily bread. Daily, daily. You find the word daily? It makes every item on that prayer pattern a daily demand. You walk out without that prayer, you just find yourself trapped. Somebody will lie in your prayer and make you a witness and you say, yeah. you have lied together. You lie the lie together. But coming from a prayer altar, burning with fire. No, that's not what you said. Grace to engage the prayer altar on daily basis. To be free from all the foul spirits of hell that are out to defile our destiny. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> It's your day. Yeah. And it's my day. Yeah. Fresh grace yeah. to engage with what it takes to live a life that pleases God. We receive it today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And then he said, There are kinds that will not go except by prayer and fasting. So the fasting agenda of the church is for your benefit and my benefit. You can demand anything of God in that fast. Number three, we must continue to engage the cleansing power of the world, the cleansing power of the world. You are now claimed by the words I've spoken to you. John 15, 3. That that method cleanse her by the washing of water by the word of the Lord. Ephesians 5, 26. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is true. John 17, 17. His word sanctifies. So taking daily showers in the world is one of the demands for living a sanctified life. A daily bath. Wherein shall a young man cleanse his way by giving heed unto, unto thy word? Thy word have I hid in my heart and I may not sin against you. Psalm 119, verse 9 to 11. In conclusion, faith is a must for anyone to live a sanctified life. 
Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Until you believe that sanctified living is a reality, you don't experience it. That living a life that pleases God is a reality, you don't experience it. Whatever a believer will not believe, he can never experience. As many as received him, he gave power to become the sons of God. Even as many as believe on his name. You can't become what you don't believe. But if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Somebody get, got saved last Sunday and he couldn't taste alcohol again. He got saved last Sunday and got delivered from occultic powers. My God. He believed in the world. He believed in his prophet. I heard of him that he, has, he was sent to lift up bodies from people. So I came. And my body was lifted. Without faith, it is impossible. Hebrews 11, 12, I mean, Hebrews 11, 6, to please God. No one is holy. That's why you remain there. No one can be sanctified. That's why you are there. Whatever we will not believe, we cannot be empowered to experience. Why must we believe this? I'll read two scriptures and then we'll be running. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And so, wow, if they don't become past tense, you can't make it. Wow, some of you. How many want to make heaven here? Come on, let me see your hand. Christianity is a waste of life without making it through to heaven. A waste of life. A waste of life. Ephesians 5, 1 to 7. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children. And walk in love as Christ has loved us and has given himself to us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling sabbath. But fornication and all uncleanness, all covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no one among us, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Because we have a different destination. Now we go to Romans chapter 1 and verse 28. To 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do silly things which don't add value to anybody. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, magnanimity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, Proud, both boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Now, who knowing that the judgment of God, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit all things are worthy of death, and not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. You need to see how many believers are running around, those who steal government money. You need to see. You need to. 
for what to eat. You know he stole the money. And you are laughing. Consume it with him. They know the judgment of God. That those who do those things are worthy of death. God has more in store for you than any man will ever make available to you. There's no one dime of government fund in this ministry. Never. We don't do lunches, so we don't invite anybody. So what is the problem? <laughs> Even in church, we don't launch anything. Each one launches himself. <laughs> As he hears the word, the one he chooses to believe. Caution, my friend. Caution. May you not eat poison. Amen. May you not eat poison. Amen. May you not eat poison. One of the key benefits of the fear of God is favor. And that's why you are picking your Priscilla encounter right now. Because as you turn your heart where you are, favor will be following you from henceforth. Those who fear God supernaturally do well in life. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delights himself greatly in his commandment. His seed, so they leave an inheritance for their seed seeds, shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the oppressed shall be blessed. My God, wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure it forever. No crookedness, no playing games. Endure it forever. We have said, if you are, the law is all about hatred of evil. We saw the favor of God provoked by the fear of God in the following lives. Joseph, the fear of God caused Joseph to ascend the throne of Egypt without any human aid. How shall I do this wicked thing and sin against God? Genesis 39 verse 9. So he fled from the trap of Potiphar's wife. Genesis 42, verse 18, but I fear God. You can't fear God and not know. This do and live, for I fear God. That was his testimony. And we saw our favor trade his steps everywhere. He obtained favor in the house of Potiphar. Genesis 35, verse 9. He was favored in the prison. Genesis 39, verse 21. He showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prisoner. Favor everywhere until favor saw him to the throne. God is changing everybody's story here today. Yeah. The fear of God brought Daniel into favor in Babylon, a captive. Now God has brought Daniel into favor with the keeper of the prison. I mean, with the chief of the eunuch. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Daniel purpose in his heart, and so on and so forth. And uh, verse 9, please. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. He purpose, verse 8, brought into favor, verse 9. And we saw the favor speaking all through his journey. You are entering into favor today. Yeah. As you choose to turn from anything you know displeases God, you are entering into favor with God today. Yeah. Paul the Apostle commanded generational impact in ministry through the fear of the Lord. Unusual favor. I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle. But I'm what I am by the grace of God. First Corinthians 15 and verse 9 
and ten. By the grace of God, I'm what I am. I am the least of the apostles that I'm not even qualified to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, the favor of God, I'm what I am. You are witness than God also. First Thessalonians 2.10 How holily and justly and unblameably we have behaved ourselves before you that believe. The fear of God. Second Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Having, therefore, saying we have this ministry as we have obtained mercy, received mercy, we fail not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That brought him into favor. Generational order of favor. Every day, Paul said, every day, Paul said, the fear of God is what triggers the favor of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you are walking back home today decked with the favor of heaven. Yeah. All of the above is because favor is the experience of everyone that truly walks in the fear of God. Psalm 5, verse 12, thou shalt, he said, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, will thou compass him as with a shield. With favor. He surrounds the righteous with favor. You step out of here today, everywhere you appear, favor will manifest itself. <laughs> Therefore, every worshiper should expect this ongoing wave of sanctification to bring about a spiritual change of story in all areas of challenges in our lives Amen. as we secure favor with God. Favor will change anybody's story. It changed the story of Joseph, a slave without any address, and he became the householder of Potiphar. He was cast into prison unjustly. Favor followed him there. God was with him. Favor was oozing for his life. It's your turn. <laughs> now identify three areas before I made the altar call where you desire the favor of God. And do this. Also, identify one thing that you know does not please God in your life and engage the blood of Jesus to clear it off. So you have two things. I shouted this yesterday, Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. The blood of Jesus, the blood of the everlasting covenant, and he empowers people to do the things, to do the, the will of God and please him. Put that on the screen and let's read it. Verse 20 and 21, because you're going to do that right now. There is one thing in your life you have struggled with for long. You want to be free from it today. It will be your launching pad into that realm of favor. It will be your launching pad to that realm of favor. Now let's read. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work, to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory. So you engage the blood of the everlasting covenant to break and destroy that yoke that won't let you please God. That's a particular area you need to face. It could be spiritual slumber. The Bible is kept on the shelf the next Sunday. Dry prayer altar. And some obvious evil vices in your life. You hide it, you pay for it. You repent of it, you are restored. And then, three areas where you desire is favor. 
Things are not just working as you know. And Jesus will visit you. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I know there are many here today who are yet to know Jesus, who are yet to become members of God's own family, who are yet to be born again. Whosoever comes to me, Jesus said, I will in no wise cast out. Somebody 27 years in courtism came out free. Somebody smoking addict on every day, drinking every day, and alcoholism every day came out gallantly last Sunday. Somebody is coming out of every evil hole on this line. If you are here, you want to give your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. That's where the journey begins. God bless you. God bless you. You want to give your life to Christ this morning, please stand to your feet. It's the dawn of a new day. Jesus, forgive my sins. Grant me a new beginning. God bless you. God, many more are getting up and remain standing, please. Now, secondly, there are people here who were perhaps born again before, but suddenly the book, the brook has run dry. No more connectivity. You want to rededicate your life to Christ today, please stand to your feet. I'll pray with you at the same time. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus today, please stand to your feet. Please stand to your feet. Jesus, I want to dedicate my life to you today. Stand to your feet. Stop standing in the middle of the road is a risk. Stand to your feet. It's your turn for a new beginning. Stand to your feet. And God bless you as you do. Now, everyone standing both for the first and second call, please bow your heads for prayers. Stop filling those slips for now. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has found them. Your grace has brought them. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all satanic assaults. You are going to make this journey to the end. All the blessings that follow redemption begin to manifest in your life. In the name of Jesus. The grace that brought you will preserve you. You will serve Jesus to the end. You will live your overcomer's life. And you make heaven at the end of the day. In Jesus' precious name. So shall it be. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please get seated. Complete those forms right now and quickly so and submit that to the church officials around with you. We'd like to be in touch with you and be part of your joy. Secondly, please note, you are given a card titled, We Love You. We'd like you to take that card at the end of this service to any of the new converse tent present it to the officials there. They will give you some gift items from the church that will help establish you in the faith. So please call by. These new converse tents are across all the various major entrances. Um, and um, you'll be glad you did. Be reminded also of the Believers Foundation class that holds every Monday. You go for only two Mondays. Through your address, we get in touch with you to let you know which one is nearest to where you live. And if you choose the option of online, we have it on the screen, uh, get connected, be truthful about it, and then watch how God will grant you a sure foundation for this new journey. In Jesus' name, amen.
Are you ready for your Priscilla encounter blessings? <laughs> Nothing flies like favor. Every siege of stagnation by divine favor ends in your life today. <laughs> Nothing secures a great future like favor. Rabeko Tanero and Bayekando. The same order of favor that follows this commission, this many years, begins to follow you from now. <laughs> favor is the cure for all misfortunes. Therefore, every experience of misfortune in anyone's life comes to an end today. Yeah. Whenever a man turns back to God, he restores his dignity. By divine favor, I decree restoration of your redemptive dignity. Jesus, every unwanted habit of your life that you desire for rescue today is declared rescued. <laughs> Favor secures supernatural fruitfulness. He said to Mary, you are highly favored. What has never happened before will happen. You will not know a man but to carry a seed. And it happened. Favor. Highly favored. Supernatural fruitfulness. Therefore, for anyone called barren, in the name of Jesus, by divine favor, I declare you a mother and a father of children. <laughs> He that findeth the wife findeth a good thing and has obtained favor from the Lord. Every marital siege by this divine favor is finally over. <laughs> by divine favor, the redeemed are not permitted to beg. Therefore, the siege of begging for survival by divine favor is over in your life. <laughs> I've been young, David said, and I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor is it begging bread. The righteous are not permitted to beg because they are shielded with favor. Therefore, for everyone called jobless, the favor of God brings you your miracle job this week. <laughs> Maybe you have been looking on to man for a long time. That's God, why God left you to eat. You are looking for a man. 1983, a young man came to me and said, if I only had somebody, to help me to gain access to UI. I said, that's why God didn't show up. You are looking for somebody. God does not have anything to do with the legs of a man. He's the almighty. He can enter anywhere. So I said, do you believe that? I was reading to him from Psalm 147. Then I laid hands on him. Then he went to UI at the gate. A car parked by. I said, excuse me, I'm going to so -so court. He said, yes, I know the place. They thought he was a student. So when they got to the car, he said, I also came here for admission. So the man went in and said, I have two of my sons here. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so they gave to the son of God, and he went back with his own son. <laughs> Amen. God 
does not count on the strength of the horse, nor on the legs of a man. You have been banking on man. That's why life is being told so tough for you. Michael! Contractors, consultants, trust your God. He will pave a way where there is no way. We knew no man to get this land. There is no chief or high chief or middle chief or low chief. Favor give it to us. In the name of Jesus, what no man can give you, favor will deliver in your hand. Favor will deliver into your hand. Therefore, this week, a week is declared a week of the fear of the Lord. And a week of undeniable manifestations of favor. <laughs> lift up whatever you noted now. Whatever you wrote down, lift it up. And in the name of Jesus, I decree that every item in your heart or on your paper where you desire favor be delivered to you for a testimony. <laughs> and so shall it be. That jumps at the world when it's declared maximizes the blessings thereof. So don't toy with it. Whatever you have declared, no more. As you step out of here, no more. Yeah. When the tempter shows up, confront him with the blood of Jesus. And he will bow. Because that blood has power over our conscience. That blood has power to purge our conscience. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Je- you, you react with the blood, and then the tempter will find his way out. For they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Brand new day. Yeah. Don't forget our text for the month: walking in the newness of life, conquering controlling powers, and the triumph. The blood triumph. Get hold of them and make the most of this season. You will testify. Yeah. Many will testify this midweek service. Yeah. Multitudes will appear on Sunday for their testimony. Yeah. You will never be left out. Yeah. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks. For the second in the series of our Priscilla Encounter services, give him glory for the privilege to be in his presence. Thank him. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. That humbling testimony we heard this morning is a pointer that there is no closed case with God. There is no closed case with God. From which you are to run in. There is no closed case with God. Heart problem, liver crisis, kidney challenge, that's death. And it's rolling on the floor here. The good news this morning is that your case is not closed. Everyone's spiritual challenge will be turned to spiritual triumph. Everyone's spiritual disease shall be turned to spiritual health and wholeness. Whatever seems to have come to stay in your life that's not of God, 
must drop off your life today. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Now, after two days, will he revive us? Lord, I'm here to be revived. This is the second in the series of Priscilla Encounter Services. Revive me, spirit, soul, and body. Re-energize my life. Re-energize my spirit. Re-energize my soul. By your word today, Renew me through and through. Grant me a, a brand new beginning today. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. When the same barrier is removed, man's breakthrough is established. Your long-awaited breakthrough will be part of your package today. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for treating us to great manifestations of your presence. Receive our thanks. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we are going to give the godly wives of this church a big hand of praise to God because this is, I've seen three now, of wives that stood at the point of death with their husband and were instrumental, instrumental in bringing them out. So for all the virtuous women in this church, all the godly women here who are standing by the truth, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. And everyone among these precious women that may be offside, today you are coming on the right side. Somebody stayed three years in the hospital. You heard the testimony? The wife won't let go. Honey, you cannot die. You will not die. And stood there and came back home with him. And the two of them were here on the platform. Someone crashed in a motor accident and confirmed dead in the hospital. The wife sat down there, anointed him. You won't die. You must come out. They were the child that same night. Death sentence converted to life. In the precious name of Jesus, for those who are yet to be married, that's the kind of wife you will be. You never rejoice at the challenge of your husband. You'll be a major player in the breakthrough of your family. For Charlie Holmes this morning, I decree restoration of peace. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. Now we have too many preaching priests. Or very few teaching priests. Preaching only begets inspiration. It's teaching that conveys instructions. You hear so much preaching that at the end of this, okay, what do we do now? Because there's something to do there. It's preaching. But teaching unveils principles, reveals 
instructions, corrections, reproofs, that the man of God may be made perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Ours is a do-it-yourself church. It's not pray for me, pray for me, church. Ours is a school, that's why we run a syllabus. We are running a syllabus of sanctification this month, and we run it every year. They can call it, you know, godliness, holiness, is the same thing. You stand to be cheaply deceived if you pray for me, pray for me, believer. They will pray for you and see for you and run you into trouble. They will see that your wife is your problem. And your husband is a devil. Most of you go from place to place. You see what the kind of thing you hear? I thank God he brought me up to see him as my source. All this pray for him, pray for me syndrome is it doesn't make a man. Give me feeding bottle, feeding bottle, feeding bottle. You can't become a man like that. But those who do know their God and the covenants of their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. And that's where you belong. Amen. That's where you belong. Amen. That's where you belong. Amen. And that's where you will remain. Amen. She knew what to do, she did it. Got her husband out of the theater, heart working, liver working, kidney working. What did you use? Ah, uh, I won't tell you now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Say, do it yourself, sister. I can't breathe for you. I can't eat on your behalf. I can't go to the toilet for you. If you don't go, you mess up. Amen. Amen. We better wake up and take responsibility. I've been in this church. Nothing's happening to me. Nothing's, you are not making anything happen. You have to make it happen. You are here, you won't repent. Can you be saved? No. Can you be baptized in the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. I've been believing God for Holy Ghost. They don't believe God for Holy Ghost. Repent. Yes, sir. <laughs> when you turn, I will pour. Yes, sir. You have not turned. How can I pour? So even Papa lay hands on me. He can even lay leg on you. What does he say? Sanctification is a choice, not a gift, nor a calling. Everybody that has the hope of eternity must subscribe to it. It's a choice to me, a choice between heaven and hell, between joy and sorrow, a choice between peace and crisis. It's a choice to me. There is no peace to the wicked. You can't be cheating on people and be peaceful. Amen. <laughs> Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. You can't be insane and flow in joy. So it, it, it's a choice to me. I lay before you life and death. Deuteronomy chapter 30, chapter 30 and verse 19. Uh, choose life. The choice is ours. The choice is ours. Whosoever has the hope of eternity with him purifies himself. If he has that hope, he makes a choice to purify himself. We must know that God is at work in us both to will and to do. Now listen to this. Ezekiel 22, I mean Ezekiel 20 verse 25, the law was not good because any aspect of it you break, you pay for it. Ezekiel 20, verse 25. Whereof I gave them also status that were not good and judgment whereby they should not live. I mean, <laughs> now, in spite of that, watch Daniel purpose in his heart under that same law. And God enabled his purpose to stand. 
because his purpose was on God's side. That he would not defy himself, and he didn't. And then up until Daniel chapter 6, there was no fault or error found in him, for he was a faithful man. He purposed his way to perfection, to sanctification. Under a law that everybody had to struggle to make things happen, his purpose prevailed. Therefore, for anyone that genuinely purposes to live a life that pleases God, today is declared the day of rescue for every such individual. Yeah. For it is God who is now at work in us, both to will and to do. Now in Romans chapter 7, Verse 18 and 19. Man's will was so weak. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth nothing, no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Now, verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. And the evil that I would not, that I do. What a wretched man I am. But now, Philippians 2, 13, God is now at work in us through Christ, both to will and to do whatever we truly will, we're empowered to do. Amen. When there's a will, there must be a way. That's the clause of <laughs> the grace and truth that came by Christ. The capacity to will and to do now resides in us. Whatever you truly will, you are enabled to do. For the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now, it's built in us the capacity to will and to do. Thank you, Jesus. Anything you truly will, you are supernaturally empowered to do. My son, give me your heart. Now, it's your heart, so you decide who to give it to. And let your eyes observe my sayings. Give me your heart. And so, <laughs> you have the right to give your heart to wine or give your heart to the Holy Ghost. Give your heart to filthiness or give your heart to holiness. And where your heart is, is what determines the issue of your life. Therefore, keep your heart or give your heart to the right thing. For that's the source of all the issues of your life and my life. Your heart is your heart. You can give it to cocaine, or give it to Christ. Your heart is your heart. You can give it to wine or give it to the Holy Ghost. My heart is my heart. I choose where to give it to. That's why today we are absolutely responsible for our consecration or desecration. We are responsible. God will have no right to judge anyone if he has not given us the capacity to do the right thing. In a great house, there are many, many verses, some to honor, some to dishonor. But if any man purges himself of these things by his choice, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified, made for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Today must mark the end of dominion over, of sin over anyone's life. Yeah. A verdict came from heaven. Sin shall no more have dominion over you. Clear. 
Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. Sin lost his dominion over us at the cross when Jesus said, it is finished. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Where you are empowered both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So cursed be the dominion of sin over anyone's life here anymore. Every evil work thrives on evil thoughts. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceeds evil thoughts. We degenerate to evil acts. So until we stop the thoughts, we can't stop the acts. And we can crush the thoughts by engaging the blood weapon. Every time an evil thought tries to raise his head, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, not here, not here, not here, no way, not here, no way, the blood of Jesus. You don't stop the thoughts, you can't stop the acts. Remember, all we're doing is understanding pathways to sanctification. It's a choice. And the path to choose is yours and mine. Whatever we will under the New Testament, the New Covenant, we are empowered to do. Satan has lost it. Over your life and my life, Satan has lost it. Not one person here will miss his place in heaven. In the name of Jesus. Let's look at three gruesome costs, or four of them, three of them, of ungodliness. If you know the cost, when you see beware in any, any electrical installation, you don't need any advice. You are not ready to die. You don't say, why well, can, how can they say beware? No. Don't beware. Just go. <laughs> beware means beware. Watch it. Death is in the pot. So they put a skull there. If you are not going to beware, that's your skull. <laughs> and it's better you see your skull before you die because after that you can't see your skull again. So they put the skull there with hole here, hole here. No cheeks, no flesh. That's why we say beware because that's your skull. This place makes cause for those who will not beware. Number one cost of ungodliness is to open the door to sickness and disease. Opens the door to sickness and disease. Three quick scriptures. Mark chapter 2. Son, thy same be forgiven thee. Verse 5. And then religious people, who are that that can forgive us? They say, which one is easier? This man's trouble is caused by sin. If I don't destroy the root, it can't be free. After all the arguments, then, all right, take up your bed. Because your sins are forgiven. So be free. Now listen, not every sickness is a result of sin. But many are. Many, many are. In John chapter 5 at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus met a man who had been sick for 38 years. And mercy showed up, got him healed, and saw him in verse 14 of chapter 5. Go 
and say no more, lest a worse than this come on thee. That shows us the entrance of sickness and disease through sin. James chapter 5 and verse 14. Is any sick among you call upon the others of the child, let them pray over him, anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, if so there are those things that are caused by sin, they shall be forgiven him. It opens the door to sickness and disease. And you can be going around the entire world from one specialist hospital to another and return the same. Number two, it blocks access to supernatural breakthroughs. We just keep struggling and struggling. Why? Every breakthrough is triggered by applied revelation. And you can't assess revelation without a crave for sanctification. Turn ye at my reproof upon my spirit upon you and make my word known unto you. When your word comes, your breakthrough comes. And now your word and my word cannot come except with a desperate thirst and hunger for righteousness. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. But when his word came, he enjoyed multiple change of levels. Supernatural breakthrough, the story of Joseph. Psalm 105 and verse 17 to 22. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. And when his word came, the, Lord, the king sent for him and loosed him. Made him ruler over his house. <laughs> everything turned when his word came. When his word came, everything turned. And that's you the Lord is talking about. <laughs> Everywhere you have blocked your own breakthrough, the end of it has finally come. <laughs> You can't be cheating on people and robbing them and, you know, playing smart in court on them. And expect breakthrough. You'll be breaking down from time to time. You don't need that. Stop it. Stop it. And then pride comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, man, I'm talking about uh, uh, time. Um, time is not there. I'm not to church. I mean, how? I walk Monday to Saturday. Uh, had so many board meetings. Well done. Those who are ten times your height have served God to the end and kept legacy. My God, you will, because giants are rising. The greatest ch challenge of this time is pride. The greatest challenge of this breakthrough era of the church is pride. You will not be caught with it. And number three, the Baba of it all, it blocks access to eternity with Christ. How many of you want to make heaven? Do you want to make heaven? Now, let me start from here because I don't know what's going on around the world today. How many believe there's heaven? I can't see your hand. <laughs> Jesus said, if it were not so, I would have told you. <laughs> heaven is real. And we will all make it. We shall all make it. Amen. We shall all make it. Amen. No one shall be left behind. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. And they had an outline of those that should not think they will make it if they stay on there. If they stay on there. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But such were some of you. But now you are cleansed. Amen. You are sanctified by the Spirit of God. So we can't make it with those baggages. We have to drop them off and let them go. 
whatever won't let any one of us make heaven, I cause it from the roots today. Yeah. Because you must make it. Yeah. I must make it. Yeah. We must make it together. Yeah. There is no substitute in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 to 23. Jesus was speaking. He said, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Oh, yes, you did. In thy name, have we not cast out devils? Oh, yes, you did. And in my name, done many wonderful works? Oh, yes, you did. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from ye, me, ye that now walk in equity. He's done marvelous things through you and me, but if you go back to iniquity, they will cancel, it will cancel everything. Ezekiel 18, and we read from verse 18, or verse 20, please, verse 20. Read from verse 20. The soul that said that he shall die, he said, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither the father the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Now, but if the wicked will turn from all his sins, that he has committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Anytime you turn, you are welcome. And his foundation that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he has done, and that shall he live. Now, watch. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, say the Lord, and not that he should return from his ways and live? He said, but when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations of the wicked that the wicked man does, shall he live? All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he has trespassed and in his sin that he has sinned, in that shall he die. So it's not about I've been doing it, you must keep doing it, I must keep doing it. The day you turn back, God turns his back and things go sour. So it's not a thing of the past. It will be present continuous tense. Living to please God must be a continuous present tense. Not I did, I was, I was one can't. The day you turn from righteousness to wickedness, your righteousness and my righteousness will be forgotten. So receive grace today as you partake of the communion table to press the battle to the gate. Yes. Those folks who are doing all those things when they were right, God was doing it through them. Now ye that walk, not walked, you walk, that's what you are walking now, you are walking in equity now. You have retired from righteousness. Oh, gelatine, oh, my gelatine, in the adjourno, oh, gelatine. Peter Ruri, oh, Wabe, Paul Ruri, oh, Debe, in the adjourno, oh, gel. Those who don't speak that language you are from foreign countries. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long trek. The journey to heaven is a long trek. But Peter got it through. Paul got it through. I will get it through. Amen. I just came back from one very serious meeting from Landmark who are having executive advance. I, I was loading them with these foreign language proverbs. Ogma lagba konsho jori o. Ogma lagba. Eh? Wisdom is the master, not age. Let's, let's wake up and uh, take responsibility. Past tense righteousness won't count. Past tense sanctification won't matter. Is it current or irrelevant? So repentance is not a new converse phenomenon 
It's a lifelong phenomenon for those who truly hunger and thirst after righteousness. As wicked as Ahab was, when he turned, God wrote off his wickedness. First Kings chapter 20, chapter 21, verse 25 to 27. When the judgment came, he turned and walked softly. And God said, see how he repented. This evil shall not happen in his time. Thank you, Jesus. Now, steps to sanctification. We must crave for en the endowment of the spirit of holiness. It's available. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us to walk the holiness highway. Jesus was declared to be the Son of God by the Spirit of Holiness. Romans 1 4. Let's crave for it. Nobody encounters the power of the Holy Ghost without a genuine crave and thirst. Oh, every man that thirsted, come to the waters. And he was speaking about the Holy Ghost. It takes a thirst to have that. If ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. When the Holy Ghost comes in, Romans chapter 8, verse 13. He destroys the works of the flesh. He comes as a refiner's fire and he purifies the sons of Levi. We can offer unto God sacrifices righteousness. That's what he does. He shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, Malachi 3.3, 3, and shall purge the sons of Levi and pour them as gold and silver that they may offer unto God unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant in the sight of God as in the days of old, as in former years. We need his help. Without his help, we are limited. I decree therefore today a fresh endowment of the spirit of holiness upon every one of us. Amen. Romans 1, 4. Christ was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of Holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So we, we have access to that Spirit of Holiness. They call it the Spirit of the fear of the Lord in Isaiah chapter 11. It enables people to walk in the fear of God as a way of life. We are returning home with that package today. Amen. And it shall be with us for life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two, we must come to engage the power of the blood for our rescue. When confronted, when challenged, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Not here. Not here. Not here. No more. Never again. No more. The blood of Jesus. Never again. And he said, turn to your stronghold, you prisoners of hope. We are to turn to that stronghold when confronted. Amen. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth your prisoners out of the people. We are in the snow water. Zechariah chapter 9, 11 and 12. Turn. When they want to push you in the pit, turn. Turn to the stronghold of the blood for your rescue. Turn. Turn. The blood. The blood of Jesus. How much more shall the blood of Christ purge our conscience from evil works to serve the living God? Hebrews 9, 14. And he overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 12, 11. So we have the blood weapon at our disposal, but we hardly use it. Number three, we must continue in fellowship with the saints so we can keep going from strength to strength. He says, speaking to yourself, daily, it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceit, deceitfulness of sin. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. So we have that response to be, to be committed to fellowship. The farther you are from fellowship, uh, the more vulnerable we are to defilement. The more vulnerable we are to defilement. Don't try it, but if you ever allow the devil to cheat you to try not being in fellowship for three months, it will impart on your language. It will be defied, your language. Your thoughts will be defied. 
you have been off the fireplace, so you have become chilly and frozen. We must continue in fellowship. And finally, number three, a sanctified life is impossible without faith. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. How many want to please God here? You want to live a life that pleases God? That's the gateway to your own pleasurable adventure in life. Those who live to please God, enjoy his pleasures on earth. And it's impossible, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, to please God for either coming to God must believe that he is. Whatever you desire, when you pray, believe, and then you shall receive. Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. So faith is a must for anyone to live a life that pleases God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lift up your right hand, everybody. And desperately crave for a fresh endowment of the spirit of holiness upon your life. Jesus, I want these barriers off. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And this pre children encounter service, please take note of this, and we run through it very fast and then pray. Sanctification secures access to our sevenfold redemptive inheritance, which, according to Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, include power, riches, Wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. Each of these blessings require the fear of God for manifestation. For instance, Turn ye at my reproof, and I'll pour out my spirit upon you until you turn, I can pour. Proverbs 1, 23. You don't turn, I won't pour. Until you turn, I can pour. And you know what old engine oil does to a car? When it loses vis viscosity, that's a crack. That's a crack. There's a crack. Luke chapter 5, 37 to 39. No one puts a new wine into old wine skin. Lest the wine skin burst and the wine is spilled and God hates waste. God that would remain that and nothing be lost. So no one will be endued or anointed with fresh oil with an old lifestyle. So it takes a renewer to assess the new anointing. Now, this is a prosperity church, but let me tell you this. Acquaint now thyself with God and be at peace. You want to enjoy my prosperity agenda? Get to understand the way I relate to people. Receive, I pray thee, the Lord from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. Job 22, and no time for it, but 21 to 26. Receive the law, operate it by the word. Mm. and put iniquity far from your tabernacle. Then shall you lay up gold as dust. So it takes financial integrity to work in his financial fortune. Financial what? Integrity. It takes financial integrity 
to operate in the realm of financial fortune with God. He that maketh haste to be rich, be rich by all means, shall not be innocent. As the ostrich lays eggs and hatches them not, James 17 11. So it's a man that gets riches and not by right. He shall leave it in the midst of his days, and at the end he shall be a fool. It takes financial integrity to operate in God's riches. Power, riches, wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. And by wisdom, kings reign. So one can die a slave, living in sin as a way of life. It is righteousness that restores our royalty. Yes, sir. First Peter 2, verse 9, we are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, chosen to show for the praise of him who has called us unto, out of darkness, mar marvelous light. So it takes commitment to live in a life that places God to have our royalty restored. We don't die as slaves to sin. Strength. The strength of Samson was gone as if it never existed. He lost his strength to sin. Sin is a destroyer of strength. He has obtained supernatural strength for us. But it takes the fear of God. To walk in it. Proverbs 31 and verse 3. Proverbs 31 and verse 3. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyed kings. That's what the man Samson did in Judges chapter 16. He shook himself, <laughs> but no more power. Strength is destroyed. Number five, honor. He that purges himself of all these things shall be a vessel unto honor. Honor. Honor demands a purging. Honor demands a purging. Every trace of shame and reproach around anyone's life shall be there no more. Yeah. And then glory. Same brings reproach. Proverbs 14, 34. Righteousness exhausts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Any people. Beware of the era of Uzziah, who was walking right following the revelation of Zechariah. And he was marvelously helped until he was very strong. And when he became strong, his heart was lifted up within him, and he ended his journey a leper. The glory is departed, Ichabod. Sin brings reproach. Beware of the sin of pride. It stops access to grace. And when grace is no more there, this grace replaces it because nature abhors vacuum. Caution. Caution. No one's glory here shall be turned to shame. 
No one's lifted here will end up in a fall. And then finally, blessings. We know that God's blessings usually train the believer's obedience. Obedience is what facilitates access to God's blessings. You hearken to my voice, observe to do what I tell you to do. All these blessings will come to you and overtake you. So we must observe to do what he commands to do for all those blessings to come upon us and overtake us. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 and 2. And John 14, the word says, whosoever has my commandments and keep it, is the one that loves me. And if you love me, I will love you. And I will manifest myself to you. We can't see his blessings more than we respond to his commandments. Again, my prayer is that no one misses his place in this awesome season that he has brought us into. In the name of Jesus Christ. This seven-fold package is in one. It's the fear of God that causes each of them to blossom. The fear of God causes their manifestation in our lives. The fear of God is behind all those seven things. If they are not there, they are not there. And they are all yours. They are all mine. Therefore, there is no time we need power more than now. The wicked is doing more wickedly because the, the devil knows his time is short. So we need to take cover under the power of God. I give to you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So there is a way you look that kidnappers will run when they see you. There is a way you wear God, you wear God, that armed robbers will see you and take over. There is a way you wear God that they sight your house and they say this is not a place to go. This is not a place to go. They don't know the Bible only but this is not a place to go. The glory. The power. Therefore, look at those sevenfold package and say, I'm leaving home with this one today. Yes, sir. I'm leaving home with this sevenfold package today. I refuse to live a powerless life from henceforth. Therefore, I'm committed to a continual renewal, renewal of my spiritual life. To be found worthy of the fresh oil. I said, some, some can be talking, anything is talking, but God does not bless the crooked. The God that I know, he doesn't what? Uh, we are not blessed because uh, we are doing something. We are doing right things. Amen. God does not bless the crooked. God, look, find out what they do and go and do it. God, is no respecter of persons, sir. It's no respecter of persons. Amen. Amen. I can testify of his blessings in my life because there's no game in it. No games. No games. I'm blessed, oh. all the devils know. Uh, because I tell them to. I'm very blessed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Something must break loose in everyone's life today. Amen. Lift up your right hand, everyone, wherever you are, and ask Jesus. Jesus, I want a new beginning. I know I'm losing out without responding to the demand for sanctification. I, I'm, I'm the one losing out. I mean, Jesus, help me today. Help me today. I don't want to sell my battery for a muscle of meat. Help me today. Help me, Jesus. I need your help. If there's anything you know does not please God in your life, turn from it right now. Ask God, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning. I've had your word, I'm turning. I'm, I've had your word, I'm turning. I've had your word, I'm turning. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. There is no sin 
God cannot forgive. But there is no sin we forgive without genuine repentance. Take that home. Lord, I'm sorry. If you are truly sorry, he empowers you to overcome it by forgiving you. If we say we have not sinned when we have sinned, then we deceive ourselves and there's no truth in us. But if you confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness as if they never existed. Brand new day. Watch the flow of God's presence in all areas of your life from henceforth. Watch the flow. My God, watch the flow. Watch the unrest of your life disappear like a dream of the night. Because the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever. Forever. Isaiah 32 verse 17. Forever. The work of righteousness shall be peace. And in fact, the righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever. Forever. All the ups and downs, all the anxieties, the apprehensions of your life, they will disappear as if they never existed. Yeah. And when you are at peace, you are provoked supernatural manifestation. Hold your peace, I'll fight your fight. Hold your peace, I'll fight your fight. Hold your peace, I'll fight your fight. That will be your experience from now. Now, there are people here today who are yet to give their life to Christ. That's where the journey begins. If you're in this service and you are not born again yet, I, or you are not sure whether you are born again or not, then you are not. That's where the journey begins. The journey to heaven, the journey to a life of meaning and relevance begins with new birth. You are here, you like me to pray with you to become a member of God's own family. So you come under his care, under his covering, to begin to live his kind of life on the highway to heaven with abundance of testimonies on the earth. If you are here this morning and you are in that situation, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me my sins. Please stand to your feet. I want to be born again today. Stand to your feet. I want to become a child of God today. Stand to your feet. I want to be free from a life of struggles. Stand to your feet. Jesus, save me today. I'm here for you. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. God bless you. Many more are standing up. God bless you. And God bless you. It's a brand new day for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Secondly, there are people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ. That testimony that was read said, I rededicated my life to Christ. And you saw the changes that follow after. Every cut off branch of a tree is dead. It's only a matter of time. You want to reconnect back to your Heavenly Father today. Wherever you are, stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. All of us who are standing in the first course still remain standing. We're about to pray together right now. Jesus, I'm dedicating my life to you today. I'm tired of a life of sin. I want to enjoy and experience the reality of new birth in my life one more time. Stand to your feet. All of us who are standing both for the first and second call, please, you, you may stop filling those forms for now. And bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me. All my sins. I repent of them. In truth. And I believe in your forgiveness. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. 
I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm not a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your right hand up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them into your kingdom today. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of us standing right now with the blood of Jesus. Be covered against all the assaults of the wicked one. Your life takes a new turn from now. You will know it in you. Others around you will see that Jesus has touched your life in the name of Jesus. Grace to run the race to the end is imparted upon your life today. You never miss your steps. The beauty of redemption shall keep showing up in your life and you'll make heaven at the end of your journey. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Please take your seat. Complete those forms and pass them on to the church officials around with you. And you have a little card they are giving you. We love your card. Please take that after this service to any of the tents along the major entrances where we mark New Converse tent. You hand it over to them there and they'll give you some gift items from the church. It will be for your edification. It will help you to develop in your newfound faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. For this massive salvation, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Shall we please stand and let the stewards please come as we serve the communion table right now? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Exercise thyself rather unto godliness. You don't wait for it. You consciously develop capacity for it. Exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Having the promise of the life which now is, the one which is to come. It's not just about heaven, it's about the best of life here and heaven to match. The best of life here and heaven to, that's what godliness offers. What does exercise imply? Engage in spiritual workout. Take a walk. Reflect on your life. Must I end my journey like this? One leg in, one leg out. Is this the way forward? What I'm doing, is it leading to heaven? Because I know what things make for heaven. Is this one leading to heaven? Can no shame me. Only me Daru, Ramelawa Jesu. Have a workout, a spiritual workout. Have a spiritual workout. And you don't know Lepa Wadao. Nothing penny runuku wada. One man runuku wada. You don't guess your way through. You think through for a change of approach. Without spiritual exercise, nobody can live a sanctified life. Spiritual exercise. Consciously. They are all momentary. They are all temporary. Amen. Amen. When you grab this, it will decorate your present and secure your eternity. Yes. It will decorate your present. All that feared God in scriptures excelled in their various endeavors. Not just that they are going to heaven. They don't threaten me with heaven. No, we are having the best of life here. Yes, sir. Best of life. Yes, sir. Ask many people here. Best of life. Yes, sir. Eh? Ever smiling, ever rejoicing. Yes. Best of life. Best of life. Best of life. <laughs> so we must stop waiting for it to happen. We must start working to make it happen. Sanctification will not drop on anybody. It's a desperation to please God. And engaging in required exercises 
to make it happen. The power to will and to do is now in you and me. So the battle is won. We now take our position if we're interested. Heaven is sweet, my God, and hell is real. No one here will go there. Amen. No one here will go there. Amen. But you know, there are people that are in hell right now, they say, what the hell? Oh, you don't hear that? What the hell? What the hell? They are, they are already experiencing the heat of hell. But can you imagine when that kind of word came out of your mouth last? No. No. You are not there. You are not there. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. My God, we shall be so distinguished from the rest of the world as if we don't live there anymore. As we partake of this communion today, let's aim at the holiness of Christ. Which of you convinces me of saying, that's the master, that's Jesus? Because I live, you shall live also. You live like me. And when we eat his flesh and drink his blood, we are empowered to live like him. For their sake, I sanctify myself. So it's not a thing that came on me. I, I, I took the responsibility for it. John 17, 19. Grace to take responsibility to live a life that pleases God comes upon us afresh through this communion table today. Amen. Every byproduct of sin, sickness, disease, oppression, curses, spares, enchantments, every byproduct of sin ravaging anyone's life, as you partake of this communion, they drop off you finally. <laughs> the sevenfold redemptive package is the embodiment of Christ. Who now lives in you yes. and me? Christ in you. The hope of glory. So the fountain of power, of riches, of wisdom, of strength, of honor, of glory, of blessings, now reside in you. And as you partake of this communion, I see them begin to manifest in a new way. <laughs> no sick soul Leave this service with sickness today. Amen. No oppressed soul leave this service still oppressed today. Approach the table with faith and let the purging power of the blood purge everyone's conscience from evil works Amen. to start serving the living God Amen. in a new way. Amen. We declare this table as the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Amen. And as we partake of this today, may each one of us be practically empowered to start living like Christ. Amen. May the world around us take knowledge of us from henceforth that we are disciples of Christ. Amen. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen. In Jesus' name. So shall it be. Amen. Everyone online at this time, the same grace comes upon those materials. Amen. And everything is declared the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Please get seated. Take your turn as directed. And expect your raw encounter of change of story in the name of Jesus. The blood of
of Jesus set me free. Sin and sorrow, the blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus set me free. From sin and sorrow, the blood of Jesus set me free. Oh, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus set me free. From sin and sorrow, the blood of Jesus set me free. Oh, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus set me free. From sin and sorrow. Let 
Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven, everyone, and give God thanks for the encounter from the Lord's table today. Give him thanks for the encounter with the world today. Give him thanks for your liberty. The chains are broken, and we have escaped. The chains are broken. Thank God for the sevenfold redemptive package going home with you today. Thank God for the end of shame and reproach around your life. Thank God for the end of dry seasons in your life. Thank God for coming under the showers of his blessings today. Give him glory and praise. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. If you had any note, please check through them and get to the point of assimilation where it comes to stay with you. Also be reminded of the books recommended. They are for your good. They are for your profit. They are for your profit. Maybe it's good to mention again here that the church has never taken a dime from books. Oh, we are doing a project. We are doing right church planting. Bring money from books. We keep reproducing to bless mankind. Now does any of the authors, any, not just uh, your papa. No author takes royalty in our publishing house. Freely we are given, freely we give. It's about you being blessed. Not about some fellows or some church being blessed. Some have problem believing those things because of the evil heart of unbelief. Evil heart. Evil heart of unbelief. Someone said, how can they say they're giving us a Bible for free? Are yeah, we not the one printing it? Okay, you are the one manufacturing the paper. <laughs> I'm paying the wages of those people working there. People just are careless. Yeah, just careless, careless. Caution, my friend. It's time to clean up. It's time to clean up. It's time to clean up. I've not benefited a dime as salary from this ministry from January 88. Where were you? I never knew you then. No. It was between me and my God. I'm blessed. Yes, sir. Super blessed. Yes, sir. Walking in the truth blesses people. Walking in the truth blesses people. Super blessed. It's all up to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I see something breaking forth in your life. Amen. Because you will testify. Amen. This week is declared another week of commotion of testimony. Amen. Breakthrough in your spiritual life. Amen. Breakthrough in your family. Amen. Breakthrough over your children. Amen. Breakthrough in your business. Amen. Breakthrough in your career. Amen. That shall be your testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus. The same way those women took care of their spouses. I'm challenging all the men. Be committed to taking care 
when your spouse is challenged. You are the priest of your house. Get committed. Get committed. Get committed. I saw this army rising. November 29, 1983, after our seemingly failed crusade in Kaduna. I saw an army rise after the order of Joy chapter 2. And I was vomiting it prophetically. Now the army is here. Amen. Amen. The army is here. Women stopping by where a child is called dead and by the grace of God upon her life, bringing the child back to life and going to his workplace. Not that he says, you, I'm the one who raised this child. And you are the one God is talking about. Amen. From now, things will be happening through your hand. Yes. That will be bringing tears of joy from your eyes. Yes. Lift up those two hands. Go in peace. Yes. Ah, on the third day, we will raise us up. Yes. Next Sunday is the third in the series of Priscilla Encounter Services. God will change your level. Yes. In all areas of your life, God will change your level. No more shame. No more reproach. No more stagnation. No more frustration. No more living under a spell. No more living under generational causes. The net is broken. You have escaped. You have escaped. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Together let's share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship. Precious name of Jesus. One genuine encounter with God is worth much more than a lifetime of effort. Lord, grant me a lifetime encounter with you via your word today. Go ahead and pray that prayer, everybody. Grant me a lifetime encounter with your word in this service today. Appear to me by your word today. Let the encounter of today advance my cause. Advance my destiny. Move me forward in my work with you. Let the encounter of today secure my destiny. Preserve my posterity and guarantee my eternity. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord Jesus, visit each one of us in a unique way today. Let today be a most memorable service in our lives. Let this day be a date of reference in our story. And thank you, Lord, for this. Let every desire today placed in this ark return as testimonies. Let every weight on the shoulders of your people be rolled away. Turn anyone's sorrow here into joy. Rescue every single depressed person in this service. And take all the glory for this. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. Understanding pathways 
to sanctification. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So there are pathways. To living a life that pleases God. Right standing plus right living. Right standing without right living is fake. By their fruits, not by their knowledge, we shall know them. By their fruits, not by their preachings, we shall know them. So much has been spoken about right standing. But be not deceived, he that doeth righteousness is righteous. First John 3, 7. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth, not he that knoweth. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Right standing is a right, is a correct doctrine, but right standing without right living holds no value. It is the applied knowledge of right standing that results in right living. When it does not result in right living, that means aborted. Understanding pathways to sanctification. The Bible is not a history book. It's a what-to-do book. The Bible is a what-to-do book. It reveals what to do to arrive at what he has provided. Whosoever hear these things of mine and do with them. So it's a what to do book. If you observe, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you may take the iron in the night and observe to do what is written in the iron, then you make your way prosperous. You have the book, you have the insight. Now go and do, go and do what he says to do. Then you make your way prosperous, and then you have good success. No one shall miss his portion. <laughs> Pathways to sanctification implies there is what to do to live a sanctified life. First Timothy chapter four and verse eight. He said, for bodily exercise, let's start from verse 7, please, verse 7. But refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. You want to excel in the task of living a sanctified life, exercise yourself. Take responsibility. In engaging with what he says to do. For bodily exercise profit a little, but godliness profit unto all things. So exercising oneself to godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. Two way blessings that have no match in the world. Blessing in the now. Eternity in the year after. What are some of the things to do if anyone truly desires to live a sanctified life? Now, this begins with a thirst. There must be a thirst, a crave for it. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled with it. Without a hunger and a thirst, forget it. The journey 
to sanctification begins with a thirst and a hunger. Without a thirst, it's not in view. There must be a desperation in the heart of anyone that is out to live a sanctified life. And very shortly, I'll be showing us the benefits of it so that the thirst can be ignited. A hunger and a thirst. Number two. No temptation has ever come our way, but it's common to man. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. But God is faithful. He will not allow any of us to be faced with any temptation without or outside our capacity to deal with it. And with the same temptation, he will provide the way of escape, the pathway out. So it's a mat it demands watch and pray if you truly want it. Peter said, no, we don't need to watch. I mean, we deal with anybody who wants to attack you here. He denied Jesus three times. Watch and pray. Watch and pray that you fall not into temptation. Watch and pray. 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 Number three, which looks very salient. Whatever you won't believe, you can become. It's to everyone according to his faith. You don't believe in the reality of sanctification, you never experience it. You don't believe in the validity of holiness, you never see it. What becomes of every believer is a function of what he believes. It can't happen, then it won't happen. It's not possible, then it won't be possible. It looks so simple. But as many as received the word, to them gave you power to become what the word says. John chapter 1 and verse 14. Verse 12, sorry. As many as received him, the word, to them gave you power to become. The sense of God. We are not empowered to become what we don't believe. It's what we believe in the world that determines what becomes of our life. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. Everybody's doing it. That's why you keep doing it. We are going on to perfection. It's not a destination, it's a journey. Why do you have your bath daily? To stay clean. Just don't do it for one month. Anywhere you appear, people will disappear. Because your presence will be very offensive. No perfume can cover that. One month of no birth, forget it. Now, leave your car for one month without washing it. They'll ask whether you, are, you just returned from a journey. Because you have gathered all the dust in your environment. And that's why the Jesus pattern of prayer is a daily engagement agenda. Give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us from temptations. Daily. Now, number four, engage the name of Jesus in battle against sin. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and they are saved. In the name of Jesus. Proverbs 18.10 The name of the Lord is a strong tower. 
the righteous run into it and they are saved. Every time you find yourself at a tight corner in the name of Jesus. I'm free. In the name of Jesus, I'm liberated. In the name of Jesus, I have escaped. Even devils who are subject to us in your name. Because at that name, every knee must bow. Luke 10, 17. Every devil surrenders to the authority of the name of Jesus. Lord, even devils are subject unto us through thy name. That's the order. Somebody was involved in a boat hazard. The boat capsized on the high sea. And there was he, drowning. The last word he said, Jesus, I refuse to die. And a hand came from nowhere, lifted him from the water, put him in the rescue boat, and he escaped. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Jesus, I refuse to die. Jesus, I refuse to die. Number five, flee from all traps of evil. Flee, flee, flee. First Thessalonians 5.22 Abstain from all appearance of evil. First Corinthians 6.18 First Corinthians 6, 18, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. Flee. Joseph fled. He wasn't praying and fasting. He fled. Well, he landed in prison, but that was the gateway to the palace. Flee. Flee. He said, flee also, youthful loss. Flee. And lastly, keep a godly company. Keep a godly company. If you walk around with smokers, you start smelling smoke. Somebody will ask you, do you now smoke? No, you are coming from the company of smokers. So it has rubbed in on you. I went after some individuals who are drug addicts in some of the areas here, and the whole environment was thinking with deadly smoke. You come out of that place, you must smell it. You didn't take it, but it has rubbed in on you. He that was with the wife shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Proverbs 13:20. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Endeavor to keep a godly company if you desire to live a sanctified life. Let's now look at some of the benefits of sanctification. Number one, it secures access to revelation that triggers supernatural breakthroughs. Every true re revelation changes people's level. You know, as we behold them, as in a glass, we are changed from glory to glory into the same image as by the Spirit of the Lord. Every true revelation triggers a revolution, something breaks forth when you encounter true revelation. Arise and shine because your light is come. And the glory of the Lord shall, 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 is risen upon thee. For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. The glory shall be sent upon thee. The Gentiles will come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3. 
And then verse 8, who are these that fly as a cloud? It changes people, people's, it changes people's level. But the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. So the fear of the Lord is what underlies access to revelation. Unto us is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God in Mark chapter 4, verse 11. But to them that are without, all these things are in parables. Who are the ones without? Revelation 21, verse 8. Revelation 21, and verse 8. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers, warmongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part. Everybody that's not on key with God's instruction for righteousness is not hungry and thirsty after it, cannot assess revelation. Without, for without, they are outside, they can't assess it. Turn ye at my reproof and I will pour my spirit upon you and make my words known unto you. It's not for the Jack and Harry. It's those who will turn when God says, hey, no. Then they assess revelation from his word. Proverbs 1.23. Number two, it's the chaos answers to our prayers. If I hide iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. David said, but now the Lord has heard me. Why? I repented. I repented. Many have prayed and prayed and prayed and there's no sign that the other side is hearing. Amen. It's time to believe God for instant answered prayers. You know what he said about Elijah? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. It avails much. It commands and provokes answers supernaturally, dramatically. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. God's hand is not sure that he cannot save. His ears are not dead that he cannot hear him. But our iniquity have separated between us and God that he will not hear us. Isaiah 59 and verse 1 and 2. It secures answers to prayers. From this time on, you begin to experience dramatic answers to your prayers. Yeah. But he that covers his sins shall not prosper. Whosoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Proverbs 28 verse 13. Number three, it secures access to fresh oil that destroys yokes and causes men to flourish like a palm tree. Access to fresh oil. Turn ye at my reproof and I will pour my spirit unto you and I will make my word known unto you. Turn, I will pour. Until you turn, I cannot pour. Fresh oil belongs to those who will turn when God says no. Those who will turn when God says no. In Luke chapter 5, verse 37 to 39, Jesus speaking said, No man puts new wine into old bottles. As the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new wine bottles, and both are preserved. No matter how much we cry, until we become new bottles. We are not into to new wine. Fresh oil is for those who care to turn. Fresh oil is for those who care to turn. And my head shall thou exalt like the head of a unicorn. Psalm 92 verse 10. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And the effect, and my eyes shall see my desire upon my enemy, 
and my ear shall hear my desire upon the wicked as risen up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, like the palm tree, he shall grow up like a cedar in Lebanon. A palm tree, no dry season. Evergreen. 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 The end has come to the dry seasons of everyone's life. Yeah. Number four, it agendas divine health and wholeness. In Mark chapter 2, that paralytic man was brought to Jesus through the roof. Jesus said to him, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. Verse 5. Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. Now, the grief has diagnosed that, that case. That case is a product of sin. Don't get me wrong. Not every sickness is a product of sin, but that one was. And then the religious people began to argue. And Jesus said, now, son, take up thy bed and go to thy house. And immediately he arose, took up his bed, and went forth before them all. And so much that they were all amazed. And glorified God saying, we never saw it in this version. When one sin is forgiven, there's a dramatic turnaround in his life. For everyone that has truly repented of things that do not please God, Expect your supernatural turnaround to follow. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Jesus healed a man by the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5. And he met him in verse 14. Now you are made whole. Go and say no more, lest you are back to where you are coming from. He was sick for 38 years. 38 years. Sin had them bound in that sickness. Jesus healed him and was looking for him. And when he found him, he said, hey, boy, come on here. Go and say no more, lest you are back to square one. So healing health and wholeness demands godliness. It's one of his benefits. In the precious name of Jesus, every affliction that came out of sin goes off finally today. <laughs> Number five. It engenders promotion. Godliness engenders promotion. We saw Daniel purpose in his heart not to defy himself with the king's rich food. And we saw how he assessed the secret of God in line with scriptures. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. And then we saw how the king bowed down and worshipped Daniel in Daniel 2, verse 46. And from that time on, for 65 years, it was just raining in the land of his captivity. The king thought to put him over all the whole realm. Promotion from one level to another, from one level to another, from one level to, one, to another. Proverbs 14 and verse 34. Proverbs 14, 34. It says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness provokes promotion. But sin will always bring shame and reproach. No one shall suffer sin and reproach anymore. <laughs> Finally, number six. Godliness secures durable riches. Not up today and down tomorrow. Durable riches. Durable riches. Durable riches. We saw that in um, Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 18. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. God is not slow. He's taking you somewhere. Don't cut corners. He's taking you somewhere. Don't look elsewhere. God is not slow as some can kind of slowness. God is not slow. It's pride that will make anybody think that God is slow for him. God, if you know who I am, I shouldn't be where I am now. Okay, be where you want to be. God is not slow. As a church, we have never cut corners. Never once. Never once. Sir, it will take more, more than 10 devils, 10 satans, 
to take a bribe from this church. No, never, never, never. Abraham said, I won't take a thing from you unless you say you make Abraham rich. When God makes rich, it's the horrible riches. Abraham was old and stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things, and that's you. Yeah. The blessings of your later days shall, be, shall far exceed the blessings you see now. Yeah. Live right. When God, when God makes rich, it is durable riches. Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delights himself greatly in his commandments. His seed also shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the oppressed shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Forever. Wealth and riches forever. Look at natural Israel today. Look at where God has placed them. Because of the covenant God swore to Abraham forever. Now, too many strikingly blessed people in this church, that blessing shall be forever in your lineage. <laughs> many are plugging in now. The blessing you are going to encounter shall be forever in your lineage. <laughs> Let me hear your loudness, amen. Godliness is a facilitator of durable riches. Durable riches and righteousness. Durable riches and righteousness. Durable riches and righteousness. There are men in the prison today, they were caught in the act. Fraud. Changing of books. Playing smart in court. And now they are grieving day and night, regretting every moment where they have found themselves. No one here shall end his journey in regret. You shall not end your 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 journey in regret. No one in your family shall suffer a prison term. Your children, your children's children shall not find their way there. There is the analysis of two um, families for over 200 years, Jonathan Edwards' family and one atheist family. I mean, the, 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 the gap is too wide. On the other side, 60% were ex-convicts, the atheists, the one who doesn't believe in God. But come to Jonathan Edwards' family for 200 years. They have raised president of universities, raised judges, raised lawyers. Ra I mean, just good news all along. Righteousness impacts on generations. Right living impacts on generations. In the precious name of Jesus, that shall be your own cause. So living right today preserve your posterity. It preserves it. Playing smart today destroys your posterity. Destroys your coming generation. Live right. Live right. Live right. All those who are stealing government money today, watch their tomorrow. You can even see it now. Fuck up on children. Order tomorrow. Pains every day. Fear every morning. What, what did you do to command this money? What, which contract did you win? My God. My sons, when sinners entice you, consent not. This church used to be six people. I mean, four people. Grew to six. Grew to ten. Total income 84, 18,000 plus. 18,000 for a whole year, whole year, whole year. God is taking you somewhere. God is taking you somewhere. And you will get there. You will get there. The same church, one year, 
80 new nations invaded. Same church in one year. God is taking you somewhere. That little business will soon become a global phenomenon. Keep living right. 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 Nobody is there already, but we are going there. I said we are getting there. We are going on our way and we are sure to get there. For those who truly hunger and thirst after righteousness shall ultimately be filled. May our hunger and thirst be sustained to the end. Now, as we close, cost of ungodliness. One, it blocks access to wisdom. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of our access to divine wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. And by wisdom kings reign. So believers continue to live as slaves without access to wisdom. Slaves to sin. Number two is tears, shame, and reproach. As we saw in the case of Samson. Shame and reproach. The one man army of Israel became a toy in the hand of his enemies. They plucked out his two eyes without anesthesia. He began to display for them. He became the entertainer. Shame and reproach. Righteousness exhausts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Everyone under the sound of my voice today, you'll never suffer shame anymore in your life. <laughs> so stop it before it stops you. Stop it before it stops you. Number three is tears, fear, and dread. Fear, fear, fear. I had a voice in the garden and I was afraid. Fear, fear, ungodliness, tears, fear. And everybody's a victim of what he fears. The wicked man runs when no one pursues him. But the righteous has bored as a lion. Proverbs 28 and verse 1. Fear torment. Fear torments. Perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. And either fear it is not made perfect in love. Fear can be very tormentous. May today mark the end of the torments of fear in anyone's life. The good news is that genuine repentance entitles every believer to forgiveness. Genuine repentance entitles every believer to forgiveness. Genuine repentance entitles every believer to forgiveness. The thief on the right side was forgiven. In his dying moment, David committed adultery and murder and was forgiven. So forgiven that his name is in heaven. For Jesus is holding in his hand the key of David that opens and no man shuts. When the Messiah came, he was the celebrated son of David. Jesus, thou son of David, say yes, that's my name. That's how forgiven he was. Genuine repentance will entitle any believer to forgiveness as if he never did it. As if he never did it. 
So don't be sorry for your past. Just repent of it. Repent of it and God will write it off as if it never happened. As if it never happened. When a wicked man turns away from his wickedness and begins to do that which is right in the sight of God, he will forget the wickedness that he did before. Forget. He will write it off. He will write it off. There is no saying God cannot forgive, but there is not he will forgive without man's repentance. Anybody can have a new beginning today. Anybody, anybody can have a new beginning today if he chooses to. Anybody can have a new beginning today if only he chooses to. Anybody. But I don't care. Proverbs 29 verse 1. He said, it that is, it that being often reproved and hardness his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. See this day as a warning. A warning to say enough is enough. Don't mistake God's silence for approval of evil. No. Because when sentence against an evil work is not speedily executed, the heart of the sons of men is setting them to keep doing evil. God is just watching. Now turn, turn, turn. Don't cross the red mark. Turn, turn. Don't cross the red mark. When you cross the red mark, I'm helpless. Don't, don't, don't. A son the last one to do that. He never saw it. You are the man. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He ended up in suicide. He ended up in suicide. He ended up in suicide. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to keep doing evil. God is not slow as others can slowness, but is forgiving towards us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Do I have a pleasure that the wicked should die? No, but I should repent. God has no pleasure that we should die in our sins. He wants us to repent so he can rewrite our story. In the precious name of Jesus, whatever anyone here truly repents of, you will be free from it for life. Whatever favor anyone may have lost to sin, shall be fully recovered. Yeah. It's your turn yeah. for a new beginning. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah. For the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. It shall grow up like the seed in Lebanon. It shall still bring forth fruit in old age. It shall be fat and flourishing. To show that the Lord is upright and is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Is everyone stunned in this service? Yeah. The seed in Lebanon is the tallest among trees, scaling unusual heights in one's pursuing life. It comes out of righteousness. Right standing plus right living. My prayer one more time is that no one misses this opportunity. Yeah. Lift your right hand up, everyone where you are seated, and ask the Lord for anything that you know displeases him in your life. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me, Jesus. You can't ask me to do what you have not enabled me to do. By redemption, you have enabled me to do righteousness if I choose to. Jesus, forgive me. I want to live for you. I want to be beneficiary of the blessings that accompany godliness. I want to make heaven at the end of my journey. Jesus, forgive me. 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 Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen.
give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Some people are here this morning that need to turn their life over to, to Jesus. Um, except a man is born again, he cannot experience the wonders of the kingdom of God. You are here this morning, you want to say, Jesus, save my soul. I want to become a member of your family. I want to come under your covering. I want to secure eternity. Jesus, forgive me my sins today. I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior and be born again. Wherever you are this morning, you like me to pray that prayer with you. Please stand to your feet. God bless you. You want me to pray that prayer with you? The prayer of salvation? You want to experience the reality of new birth? Stand to your feet and God bless you as you do. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. Jesus loves you more than you ever can imagine. Stand to your feet. Jesus, save my soul. I want to become a child of God. Jesus, forgive my sins. I want to have a new beginning. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. And God bless you as you do. Now, secondly, there are people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ. There was the story of a prodigal son that walked away. He was stripped naked. He was dying of hunger. He was homeless. His dignity was not restored until he returned to his father. Some individuals here need to return to their heavenly father. Wherever you are this morning, you want me to pray with you to be restored back into the family of God. To rededicate your life to Christ. Please stand to your feet also. <laughs> Amen. Stand to your feet. And God bless you. You want to return back to your heavenly father. You want to get back on this part of life. Please stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. And remain standing, please. Stand to your feet and remain standing. Now, all of us that responded to this cause, the first and the second, please for now, bow your heads for prayers. Where you're standing, please bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your hand, your right hand to heaven. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins and wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me on the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I believe that I'm justified by your blood. I believe I am now born again. I believe I am now restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. By your grace, I shall serve you all the days of my life. By your grace, I shall live your commerce life. And by your grace, I shall make heaven at the end of my journey. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hand on I pray. Lord Jesus, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them into your kingdom today. Let the same grace preserve them. I pray that no one steps back into darkness among us anymore. You have stepped into the kingdom of light. You shall remain there for life. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Receive grace to live the overcomer's life. Receive grace to serve Jesus to the end of your journey. Receive grace to make heaven at the end of the time. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please get seated. Complete your forms very quickly. And then you make them available to those church officials around with you. We'd like to be in touch with you and be part of your joy. Number two, they're giving you also uh, a little card captioned, we love you. We'd like you to take that card at the end of this service to any of the new converts tent. The church has some gift items for you. Please get in there and take your pack as you submit that card to them and you shall be blessed as you do. Please take time to ensure that your details in that form they are accurate. Um, number two, we have Believers Foundation class every Monday. 
you go for only two Mondays and then you're empowered to live a victorious Christian life. Through your telephone, we send you an SMS to let you know which center is closest to where you live. We have them all across the city and uh, you'll be glad you did. And for those who want to undertake that online, we have the uh, online um, details on the screen right now. Whichever way, everybody needs a sure foundation to secure a great future. Ensure you are a part of Believers Foundation class. Also, you are so blessed. We have water baptism this coming uh, Saturday. You can plug into that and you'll be empowered to walk in the newness of life through the mystery of water baptism. Jesus is Lord. One more time, church, give the Lord a big hand for this massive harvest this morning. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. At this time, please, those who have not submitted their expectation paper that we put in the ark, you can signify, raise your hand, and then the ushers will take it from you before we administer the grace of God upon that. Now, today is our special anointing service. And I'd like you to look forward to the destruction of every yoke of sin. Amen. We shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the wicked shall be taken away from your shoulder and its yoke from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Today, every yoke of sin, evil habits, shall be destroyed in everyone's life. In the name of Jesus. And now see the content of that oil as the spirit of holiness. So we call it the oil of holiness. As you partake of this anointing today, holiness will become a natural lifestyle. The taste for stain shall be destroyed. You will see the refreshing that comes through sanctification in grand styles in the name of Jesus Christ. In grand styles in the name of Jesus Christ. In grand styles in the name of Jesus Christ. In grand styles in the name of Jesus Christ. Today it shall be in you and shall be seen on you. The good hand of God. Can I hear your loudest, amen? Yeah. Can I hear your loudest, amen? Yeah. One of the heinous sins that torment believers is the sin of pride. And today, every trace of pride hiding in any corner of anyone's life shall be totally destroyed. Pride is a silent destroyer. No one ever survives it in the kingdom. It's an issue of the heart. One can look so pious and yet so proud. Look so gentle, so humble, but so proud on the inside. And we know only the blood has access to the heart of man. So by the power of God today, every form of pride hiding in the corner of anyone's heart shall be totally destroyed <laughs> by the anointing. Now it's easy for us to know that when someone is blessed, he has tendency of pride. But there are other hideous pride that are as destructive as it. Some can be proud of their spirituality. It's still pride. Pride is pride, no matter which area. Some are proud of God's testimonies in their life as if they did it. And they see no more. They see testimonies no more, sir.
Some are proud of the gift of wisdom in them. Like Aitofel. Who saw himself as the wisdom bank of the world. And when his cancer was rejected, he went and hung himself. Pride shows up in too many hidden areas. But today by the anointing, and nothing stops a man's way forward like pride. Because whatever time pride sets in, grace steps out. And when grace steps out, this grace steps in. Anytime pride steps in, or sets in, sets in, grace steps out. And when grace steps out, this grace sets in. It's a very simple biblical equation. There's no way. When you see a man's life not moving forward as it used to, pride must have crept in. You don't hear the sound of a serpent on a rock. It glides. The devil is not dependent. It's still as soft to us ever today. One can be humble and become pride of his humility. It's as heinous as that. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, every corner of anyone's life where pride is tearing his ugly head shall be destroyed today. <laughs> By this anointing, no scheme of the devil will succeed to steer pride in anyone. For without me, he said, you can do nothing. He said, by strength shall no man prevail. If you check your life properly, you see grace at every step of it. Grace brought you and I to life. Grace gave us the privileges we have had. Not all that went to primary school with you came out of it. Some died there. You didn't know God. How did you survive? How did you survive? When you stop saying grace behind your life, you have become a victim of disgrace. Paul said, I'm what I am by the grace of God. I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle. I'm what I am by the grace of God. So everything blocking your access to grace today shall be destroyed. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet. Take off your bottle of anointing away. Lift your bottles up. The content of the, this bottle is hereby declared the holy anointing oil. Yeah. And I decree that shall be to every one of us the oil of holiness. Yeah. It shall be to every one of us the spirit of holiness. Yeah. Doing the will of God shall become a delight of our souls from now. Yeah. Whatever God hates, we shall begin to hate from this moment. Yeah. I pray that the yoke of pride that blocks access to grace be destroyed by this anointing. Yeah. Satan said in his heart, not us, in his heart, in his heart, I will exalt my throne like the throne of God. Uzziah's heart was lifted up. He forgot he had been marvelously helped. He thought it was an accomplishment. His heart was lifted up. Lord, in any corner of our heart, where pride may be hiding, I decree that by this anointing, they shall be destroyed. Thank God for the blessings on our lives for now. But 
what God has in stock is far beyond where anyone may have been. If you observe to do what I tell you to do, I'll set you on high above all nations. Above all nations. Not above your nation. Above all nations. Above all nations of the earth. Above all nations of the earth. So that's what I saw in 1984 when I said to be invited to be president of Nigeria and consider the demotion. It, I saw there's an access for the believer above all nations. If you keep doing what he tells you to do in season and out of season, when convenient, when not convenient, there's a place for some, for every believer, every, it's not some special favorite, every believer, you can't make yourself. It's in his hand to make great. It's in God's hand to make great. It's in God's hand to make great. It's in God's hand to make great. When I saw what I saw, we were less than 30 in church. We were less than 30 when I saw what he showed me. You can't see what it doesn't show. The things didn't belong to God. The things he shows, they are the ones that can belong to us. He showed me, if you will keep doing what I command you to do, there's a place for you on top. Above all nations of the earth. Above all nations. My God. My God. There are many local champions in Nigeria, or many local champions, who feel that they, they are somewhere. They are not anywhere. They don't know their name outside the gate. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about impact. I'm not talking about appointment. I'm not talking about good direction. I'm talking about impact. In the precious name of Jesus, your place above all nations of the earth yes. shall not be lost to carelessness. Amen. Jesus has billions adorning him till now. After 2,000 years, there are people living, standing here with me today, all of us together. Generations, we keep referencing your work with God. <laughs> How quickly unrighteous game vanishes. There used to be many, many names in Nigeria that had so much and so much and disappear like smoke. Disappear. There is no trace that they ever walked the ground of Nigeria. Disappeared. Some five years after they left. Some one year after they left. But when God sets you up, when he lifts you up, no devil in any generation can put you down. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, whatever blocks anybody's access to grace that makes great, is destroyed by this anointing. The same way your church is blowing around the world, without sweat, in the same vein, many names here will become household names around the world. And on top of it, you make heaven in grand style. On top of it, you make heaven in grand style. On top of it, you make heaven in grand style. When I want to take you up, I can't take you beyond where my hand can reach. But when the everlasting arm of God takes a man up, it throws him to everlasting height. 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 I saw one of the cranes on our site yesterday. It's 100 meters. 100 meters. 100 meters. By the virtue of the engine driving it. 100 meters high. 100 meters high. 100 meters. Can any man's hand reach 100 meters? <laughs> now imagine the height of God. Yes, sir. They call him the most high. Yes, sir. The most high. Yes, sir. When he takes you up, and two can work together said to be agreed. It's a holy God. When we sign up for holiness, he holds us in our hand, in his hand, and throws us to heights that no effort can be taken man to. You are getting there. In the same vein, his blessings make it rich and have no sorrow. Every sorrow triggered by sickness and disease, oppressions of the devil, by this anointing, I declare them destroyed.
The plague of untimely death is destroyed in anyone's family. The plague of untimely death is destroyed in your life. Every wayward son and daughter, by this anointing, I call for their restoration. Every child breaking the heart of any one of us shall be turned to a testimony. And so shall it be. Again, the content of your bottle is declared the holy anointing oil. It shall be to every one of us the oil of holiness. The oil of meekness. The oil of humility. That will keep us going and going and going. With Jesus at the center of our lives. In the name of Jesus. Take a little of this oil on your fingertip. And say to your forehead. I begin to appropriate. The prophetic word upon your life. This is now the oil of holiness on my life. Every secret sin is destroyed from the root. Every trace of pride is destroyed in my heart. My taste for everything that displeases God is destroyed today. Call for that in faith. Give expression your task, your task and your hunger to please God. By this anointing, is yielding amazing fruit, amazing fruit. Amazing fruit, amazing fruit, amazing fruit. Pleasing God becomes every one of us new way of life, 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 new way of life. In Jesus precious name we are praying. Amen. We are going to take a shot of this oil for all that believe in this mystery as exemplified in Matthew 3, 11 and 12. He has a fan in his hand. He will totally put his floor. He will gather the grains to the Ghana. Purify the organs. And then burn up the chaff which is unquenchable fire. Every chaff of sin every chaff of sickness and disease that may be locking around in anyone's life, by the shot of this oil, I command them burned with unquenchable fire. Every pride of the heart that's blocking the way forward for many, as we partake of this shot, I command them born with unquenchable fire. By this shot, everyone's taste for sin dies. He said, if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, we shall live. So we can engage the mission of the spirit to mortify, to destroy, to take to mortuary the deeds of the flesh. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, by this short today, everyone's taste for sin dies. Everyone's taste for pride dies. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. All that believe in the efficacy of this mystery, take a shot of the oil and glorify God. That this of the flesh mortified at last. Sickness and disease mortified at last. Oppression of the wicked mortified at last. Thank you, Jesus. Cover your bottles, lift up your two hands to heaven, and celebrate God for the victory. Celebrate God for your victory. Celebrate God for your victory. 
Celebrate God for your victory. Celebrate God for your victory. You have it. You have it. Until you say it, you can't see it. I thank you for my victory today. 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 In the name of Jesus. Now, see what is happening next Saturday. 26 marriages. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, the favor that establishes people in their God-ordained families haven't been free from the torment of sin is released. Yeah. Everyone said for marriage, today is declared your day of turnaround. Nobody perhaps has asked you your hand in marriage for years. Within seven days from today, favor will locate you. You are arriving at Shiloh with your testimony. You are arriving at Shiloh with your testimony. That daughter of Abraham vomited a cockroach. Whatever has been tormenting you on the inside. Doctors can't find it. By the shot of oil you have taken today, they are flushed out of your life. Yeah. Everything that is aiming at your destruction is finally destroyed. Yeah. No one here shall bury any member of the family. Yeah. A good old age becomes the portion of your household. A good old age becomes the portion of your household. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Please choir sing a song and let them quickly come and pour in the stuff. Whatever you have collected, please come and pour it in as we sing a victory song. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing. On the hand, while they're doing that, do that very quickly, please. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's my song of victory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh. Let the song of dominion be my Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hey. hallelujah, hey. hallelujah, hallelujah, oh. hallelujah, 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 hey. hallelujah, 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 hallelujah,
name of Jesus, every item dropped into this ark is turned to a testimony. Now, in your own words, in one minute, mention all the things you put in there. What did you put in this ark today that must turn to a testimony? Now, call it by name, 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 call it by name. Whatever you are putting to this ark today that must turn to a testimony, call it by name. And call it by name, call it by name. In Jesus' precious name, as the content of this ark is anointed, every item is turned to a testimony. You shall testify. It shall be a Priscilla encounter testimony for you. You will hear good news. You will hear good news. You will hear good news. You will hear good news in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray in the spirit, everybody. Pray in the spirit. You must hear good news. In Jesus' name. Every item dropped in this ark turns to a testimony. It shall be to every individual a Priscilla encounter testimony. In the name of Jesus. The siege of satanic oppression is destroyed. The barren is made fruitful. The solitude is settled in marriage. Business failure turns to business breakthroughs. Family turmoil turns to family testimonies. In the name of Jesus. The jobless obtains favor from heaven. Many called jobless will be turned to great employers of labor. In the name of Jesus. Every issue of concern is turned to a testimony. In the name of Jesus. Every crave and desire for godliness is established for a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Help me celebrate God and give him thanks. Now pray in the spirit one more time. Acknowledging him, celebrating him. What he says he does. And no one can undo whatever God does. No one can undo whatever God does. In the precious name of Jesus. The content of this ark, every item desired by people, God's people this morning, is turned to a testimony. The siege is over. Your testimony is finally here. No one shall corrupt your heritage. Everyone of us shall make it to the end. No one shall miss his place in eternity. The blessing of godliness in the now shall be made manifest in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. Every desire today returns as a testimony. Every desire today returns as a testimony. In the precious name of Jesus. Again, the content of this ark is declared a testimony. Every item turns to a testimony. Yeah. Every de desire delivered for a testimony. Yeah. It shall be a particular encounter testimony for everyone. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. The siege is over. Yeah. 
Everyone's testimony is finally here. Yeah. Brand new day. Yeah. And brand new beginning. Yeah. You shall remember today for many years to come. Yeah. Because everyone's issue is turned to a testimony. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Yeah. Lift up your two hands, everyone. And give God glory and praise. Magnify him. Celebrate him. Glorify him. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Expectation is key to his manifestations. Keep expectations intact. From after this service, you'll be hearing good news. Amen. There is no one here that will not return with a Priscilla Encounter testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. This coming Shiloh is your Shiloh. Now, just a word. Shiloh is ordained a family convocation. It's a winner's family convocation. We are not putting any effort in inviting people. No. It's for our congregation, sir. Those who come to join us, praise God, they share of it. But prepare yourself. For this family feast. It's a family feast. And then the land was subdued before them. See the land subdued before your church. That's how God ordains for every one of us. And the land. Sir. There is no devil here. That can rise up against the church and survive. No I've seen it. I've seen it too many times. There is no devil. No gang up of hell. That's what they call dominion. Everybody's dominion shall be restored. COVID-19 came, 10,000 churches planted. My God, that's what they call dominion. No circumstance on earth will block your way forward anymore. No circumstance on earth will block your way forward anymore. As I'm talking, rural churches are still being built. They are being built in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. We've never seen that before. And the land was subdued before them. The whole condition of the winners gathered together at Shiloh. And the land was subdued before them. And them is not a building. Them is a people. Therefore, from henceforth, wherever you turn, dominion shall be established. Amen. May you keep turning right. May you keep allowing God to lead you. May you be responsive to corrections. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No one here shall end up destroyed. Yeah. No one shall regret his adventure in the kingdom. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Shiloh is a global family convocation. It's our thing. It's ordained for us. And it's answering to us. It must answer to you. Yeah. It's answering to us. It must answer to you. It's answering to the church as a body. It must answer to you as an individual. Yeah. So shall it be. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven and celebrate God because the chains are falling off you. Every chain of evil, every chain of wickedness, they are falling off everyone's life. Today. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. What you don't expect, you are not entitled to experience. What are you expecting in this service today? 
that prophetic song says, I hear the chains falling. Any chain you hate to see in your life must fall off today. Yeah. That Muslim convert got free from 10 years of masturbation. Every chain you hate to see in your life falls off you today. Somebody 23 years or so in a drug addiction business got free himself and all members of his household. Went through what big first level, second level, third level. Serving God with joy and gladness today after 23 years of captivity. Every chain you hate to see in your life must drop off you today. We cannot harbor the ark of God in our house and then sickness tormenting you. <laughs> so every single person harboring the ark of God at WSF in their home, every siege of torment and torture ceases in your life. But you know, does not guarantee access to eternity. It's captivity. Jesus, by your word, set me free from this captivity today. Go ahead and pray, everybody. City, sleeping while praying, can't stand to read the word. Only spiritual on Sunday. Jesus set me free from all spiritual activities today. Set me free from loose living. soul unto eternity. Come to my help today, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Lord Jesus, let your word come true to every one of us. In a unique way today. Let it be like when the word of Joseph came and all these chains fell off. Yeah. Let your word come true to each one of us in this service today. Yeah. And let our slavery be converted to royalty. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. Praise God, I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah. Congratulations, give the Lord a big hand and get seated, please. It's very important as we round up in our services, understanding pathways to sanctification, Jesus never forces his way into anyone's life. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you don't open, I can't enter. The choice to open or not open to me is yours. I cannot enter. He never forces his way into anyone's life. There's no day Jesus will say, you must know if you choose to. If 
you choose to. I lay before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. I'm waiting on your choice. I'm not permitted to choose for you. You want life? This is what to do. You don't do it, that means you want death, even though you won't say so. There is no way to teach consecration in one month. It's a lifelong adventure. Lifelong. The day you stop being, the day the others arrive. If a man has been doing good all his life and he turned away to start doing evil, God will forget the good that he's done. We're all familiar with that in Ezekiel 18. And in the evil in which you find him, that shall he die. So it's a lifelong storm. It's one thing that only those who seek will find it. No wonder I said, blessed are they that choose to hunger and thirst after righteousness. They are the only ones qualified to be filled with it. Why no one is perfect? We must be going towards perfection. Yes, so that we are on to we have attained. We should keep walking by the same rule and minding the same thing. <laughs> no one is free from challenges, but everybody's changing class Amen. in school. When what to get is more than what to miss, you change class. They say you are A, but you only got 70. You miss 30. Out of 100 boards, you're able to capture only 70. Somebody has captured 30. They say you will repeat this class. Why? You are below what's required to move to the next class. The choice is every individuals. My prayer is that we will keep choosing right. Amen. Remember, God is not respect of persons. Some were with Jesus five years ago. They are far away from him. They are with the devil fully. Now, with, by the allowance. They allowed it. So they got it. The precious name of Jesus, everyone on the sound of my voice today, by all biblical means, we will make heaven. Yeah. I want to us to note the following things that the Holy Ghost was speaking to me. No one's salvation can get another saved. And no one's repentance can secure forgiveness for another. No one's obedience can add value to another. And no one's disobedience can erode value from another. Everyone will answer for himself or herself before God. Proverbs said, if you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scorn, only you will be it. Proverbs 9, 12. Life in the kingdom is every individual's personal adventure. Everyone must take responsibility or he ends up in liability. 
The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. The soul that sinned it shall die. Personal. Without consecration, a longing and a panting to please God, redemption will be an adventure in frustration. For it is concentration that makes Christianity honorable. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having the seal, the Lord knows them that are his and let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Second Timothy verse chapter 2 and verse 19 to 21. But in the great house there are many, many verses. There are vessels of gold, of silver, of wood, of earth. But if any man purges himself of these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and suitable for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So honorable Christianity has its root in consecration. My God. Living with the fear of God as a lifestyle. Not posing, not being pompous. God doesn't need you and me for nothing. If I were hungry, are you qualified? All of you? All of you? The thousand rounds upon the thousand, his are mine. The earth and the fullness thereof, my friend. It is a me that you all live and move and have your being. Never need you. The fact that God doesn't need me is the motivation behind my life. Yes, sir. I'm not pursuing him for him. Whether I go after him or against him, it doesn't change him. His name is the I am that I am. All this is a bragging. It won't take you anywhere. There is no commandment of scriptures that is for God's sake. Every commandment of scripture is for your profiting and my profiting. You consent, good luck. You turn your back, well done. Life. Only your shepherd can tell you this. Sir. Only your shepherd can tell you this. My prayer is that no one will despise this God anymore. Yeah. No one will despise his instructions anymore. Yeah. Revelation and intellectual knowledge, they are far apart. Far as the heaven is far above the earth. What's in it? There are professors of New Testament that are not born again. Okay, where is the power of intellectual knowledge? <laughs> His mission is to expose people to the realities of redemption, but it's not saved. <laughs> That's the emptiness of intellectual knowledge. But when the Holy Ghost transmits any truth to you, it empowers you to triumph. Somebody's told is changing. <laughs> so it's not a one-month affair. It's a lifetime affair. The subject of concentration is a lifetime affair. You know, pray for me, pray for me. That won't get you anywhere. You have to open your heart. I have to open my heart. And do the needful to escape the horror of his judgment. In our concentration lies our decoration. See how Daniel was decorated in his land of captivity. Decorated, supernaturally decorated. He purposed in his heart not to defy himself. Acts 1 8. And then in Acts, I mean, oh, Daniel, sorry, Daniel 1 8. In Daniel 6 4, they could not find anything amiss in his life. He, he, he was operating in consecration all his days. 
The king thought to put him over all the realms. Consecration. That's where our decoration lies. Bropic tenorian gelaco rabratano. Run up and everybody say you doesn't add anything. There's nothing in it. There are big time folks today on the pulpit who are just waiting for the applause of men. You don't have to do anything. Jesus loves you anyhow. Nothing and further from the truth. Solomon loved God. God loved Solomon. My God, he decorated him. Solomon turned his back. God turned his back. What is what to do does not matter. Any nonsense, sir. Take it what you hear. Don't go for the convenient. Go for the commanded. Don't go for the convenient. Go for the commanded. In his commandment lies our advancement. Diligently listen to my voice. Observe to do what I tell you to do. I will set you on high above all nations of the earth. In his commandment lies the believer's advancement. In his commandment. You won't change levels, sir, without responding to his commandments. You can imagine somebody who's told. He's now giving from what he's told. Is that giving? He's reporting yourself that ready to go. I told this and I give you this part. Because it's not good for you not to share of it. That's okay. But why, why should you increase in your imperfection? Is that the way towards perfection? I don't believe it. I don't, don't believe it. It's your cup of tea. But as many as believe the world, it gave power to manifest a sense of God. Where will your manifestation come? You leave church in the morning, you are boxing your wife in the afternoon. Where is your life? Where are you heading for? You are either the light of the world or you are a part of the darkness in the world. You make your choice. Now, no one's unbelief can make another man's faith of no effect. <laughs> I don't believe it. That's a cup of tea. You never become what you don't believe. The judge shall live by his faith. If any man, not any group, not any team, turns back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Our faith is our breath. When breath ceases, life ceases. No one's faith will ever add value to another. Jesus got to Nazareth. He couldn't do any mighty works there. He marveled at their unbelief. The faith of Jesus could not carry them, sir. I'm word of my small faith. What you don't believe, my prayer will deliver it. No. It is the faith of the recipient that makes the prayer of faith work. No. Jesus prayed, lay hands on them, nothing worked. He marveled at their unbelief. Blessing proclaimed on me by the God sent prophets over my life answers. Amen. So when we the one I'm proclaiming on you answer. Jesus. Your faith is what defines your portion. As the church begins to disbelieve the practicality of sanctification, desecration just took over. All kinds of things. You pastors to Responsible natural men don't do it. The way you can't appear for an interview and get a job, people appear on the pulpit like that. 
You dress like that to an interview, they chase you out before you can enter the panel. God has become so ordinary to many people. The values we experience is a function of our faith in the Word of God, not by chance. It will continue to be to everyone according to his faith. We must continue to work towards securing God's commendation for therein lies our glorious future. Well done, thou faithful, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over very few things. Now, have authority over 10 cities. You have authority over five cities. I mean, his commendation will always engender change of position. Let's stop commending ourselves. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 18. For not he that commended himself is approved, but whom the Lord commended. Beware. Past tense dedication, past tense consecration, past tense sanctification holds no value in the sight of God. You better be current in your work with God. Lord, did we not do mighty works in your name? He said, I know you not. Now you are a work of iniquity. I have nothing to do with you. Matthew 7. 21 to 23. No past tense testimony holds value in the present except we continue in our quality work with Jesus. The choice is the individual's. May we continue to make the right choice in the journey of life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I felt strong in my spirit to share these thoughts with you. In continuation of our teaching series, let's look at some benefits of sanctification. Maybe that will stir passion in many more people to line up. Remember? Bodily exercise profits little. But godliness is profitable unto all things. Decorating life in the now and securing eternity in grand style. The only spiritual virtue that covers the two ends. Profitable unto all things. The promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. Now, specifically, what are some of these benefits? Sanctification secures supernatural rescue when under attack. Life is a warfare, not a playfare. We work every day upon serpents and scorpions and over all the paths of the enemy. But the angels of the Lord around them that fear him to deliver them. Psalm 34 and verse 7. No one here shall fall anymore into the trap of the wicked. Yeah. Many may be challenges of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all, and no one of his bones is broken. Verse 19. Psalm 34, and verse 19. Many are the afflictions, call it challenges of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him, delivers, continuous, present. 
out of them all. If you be follow of that which is good, First Peter three thirteen, we see that we harm you. Sanctification, secure supernatural rescue. Whenever one is under attack. Number two, it engenders peace and serenity. Isaiah 32, verse 17 to 18. The work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever. Verse 18. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. But the way of peace they know not. They have made crooked paths for their feet. Those who walk therein shall not know peace. Isaiah 59 and verse 8. The way to peace and serenity is a genuine hunger and thirst after righteousness. But the wicked man runs where no one pursues him. Proverbs 28 and verse 1. Number three, sanctification engenders access to divine secrets that makes stars. Stars in the kingdom are made of access to divine secrets. Access to divine secrets. Joseph said, but I fear God. And Pharaoh said, God, God has shown you all these. Divine secrets are the heritage of them that truly fear God. Those who tremble at his word. God speaks and it moves them. This is me, God is talking to. I must do something about it. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Because the secret of God is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. Psalm 25 and verse 14. And that made a star out of a captive. Many stars will rise here. Yeah. You are one of them. Let me hear your loudest. Yeah. Obedience may be costly, but the end result is priceless. Obedience may be costly, but the end result is priceless. Obedience may be costly, but the end result is priceless. Obedience may be costly, sir. Joseph will have lost that throne to friendship with Potiphar's wife forever without knowing what he has lost. Every loss anyone of us may have recorded in the time past, no more. <laughs> the next commandment that hits you will effect a change in your life. Amen. drank his way of the king's wine out of his destiny. He chose not to, and God engraced him to stand. The king bowed down and worshipped him. That's the inestimable value of divine secret. The good news is Every devil trying to wrestle with your future has finally lost the battle. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's your turn for a dramatic change of story. 
Number four, it secures supernatural supplies. Sanctifications secures supernatural supplies. Psalm 33, verse 18 to 19. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Upon them that hope in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Where there is no food on the market, it will be feeding them. It's only to have money in your hand and have nothing to buy. To keep them alive in famine, I'm committed. To make sure supplies available to them that fear me. Psalm 37, verse 18 and 19. Very simple to move. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be what? Forever. Huh? They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. So people don't know what they are losing. They don't know what they are losing when they are living the way they like. It takes a lot of time to put up a beauty. It doesn't take time to burn it down. It doesn't. I've never seen any building burning for 24 hours. There's no building ever built for 24 hours. Even during our church, people build with some angelic speed. But you can't finish your house in 24 hours. It won't take 24 hours to level a building. Don't let the enemy level your life. Don't let the enemy level your life, sir. Don't let the enemy level your life. There was someone here, a number of, he was a, a number of regan. They met him in that long room. He said, Bishop should not know I'm here. I was an active member of the church in Kaduna. Compassion swept me. I mean, you can't see people just falling off the way. Active member in a revival burning time. And I'm rubber. They should take me there. They said, no, it's not. They won't take me there. Take me there. Personal place with God. Be very personal. Don't be lost in the crowd. Don't be lost in oh no, busy body, not that man's matter. You see what that man is doing? What are you doing? Face your business, my friend. Remove the log in your eyes. You know, looking around for no commentator. Who is a price? Just expressing opinion for free. Have you ever found a star commentator? Number one, yeah. Number two, yeah. Stupid, stupid, stupid. He won't get any award. He's a career uh, sports council staff. Nothing. Face where you are going, sir. Face where you are going. Face it squally. Face it genuinely. And you get there. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. May this abundant blessings never be lost in anyone's life. Number five, it procures generational blessings. It procures generational blessings. Psalm 112 and verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delights himself greatly in his commandments. His seed also shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of that upright man shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Sanctification procures generational blessings, and that's what we have. 
Your walk with God will impart on the life of your children. Yeah. Your children's children. Yeah. And in your generations after you. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 7. The just man walketh in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. The just man walketh in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. They may be hailing those fraud stars today. They are destroying their generation after them. Cutting corners with government money. They are destroying their coming generation. Changing books as accountants. What you are doing, you better know it. The just man walketh in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. As for those children, where are they? Many are drug addicts, gangsters. Destroy these innocent lives. Jesus said, For your sake I sanctify myself. John 17 and verse 19. So for the sake of your children, sanctify yourself. Yes, sir. My God. Yes, sir. <laughs> he said, And for their sakes I sanctify myself. I have the reason to subscribe to this. I have the reason to subscribe to this. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. For the sake of my children, my generation after me, I sanctify myself. That if you don't even mind heaven, mind them. Yes, sir. But you can't mind sanctification and not make heaven. That's true. My God. That my son that was in drug ad, uh, uh, business and addiction, his two sons were with him there. Follow your lifestyle. And my container pray tanabo. But in the name of Jesus, everyone here shall be a worthy pay setter Amen. for their children. Amen. I'm sure you can see reasons now why you must subscribe why I must subscribe to this lifelong adventure of sanctification. And finally, like we know, it secures eternity with Christ. It secures eternity with Christ. The ultimate of our faith. To miss heaven is to miss everything. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? No, guess what? He made a list of what he defines as unrighteousness. The word is now redefining it. The word is now redefining it with our eyes open. The word is redefining it on the altar of God. My God. Very soon, listen to me, they will start teaching that the kingdom of heaven is here. There is no heaven anywhere. They will start teaching that watch, watch out, watch out, watch out. Those who think, think you, you think they believe there is heaven? They don't believe. And you hardly see them mention it. You hardly see them mention it. If falsehood is not a taxa, it will keep triumphant. Heaven is real. Jesus, if it were not so, I would have told you. If it were not so, I would have told you. You know, I'm the truth. I'm the way and the life. Heaven is real. And it's not a joint venture. Not that you contributed to be partners with Jesus in the estate of heaven. No, you, you, can't, you can't allocate yourself a place. 
Neither can you say, oh, this is my son, my daughter, by my own uh, contribution to this. <laughs> Nobody has a share in it. You can only make your way through honest terms. Sir, honest terms, sir. Honest terms. Somebody injured me. You have injured so many people in your life. So what's your problem? Somebody offended me. If all the people you were offended ever show up, you will die of shame. All this petty, petty nonsense. You, you, you better value heaven. Ephesians 5 and verse 5 to 8. When it's time, just tell me, because I've done what I need to do. Please. For this ye know that no warmonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. You should, be, you should know this by now. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not therefore partakers with them. Verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. What about it? Ameno prectomiane anekrodiba yakatando. The choice is yours. The choice is mine. We're all striving. Yes, sir. You stop striving, you are trapped. Mm. We're all striving to keep placing him. Mm. When we stop striving, we are trapped. My prayer is that no one here will end up trapped. Yeah. Your faith will stand the test of time. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. What are some of the pathways to sanctification? What must I do? To live a sanctified life. Number one, engage in continuous self purging. If a man purges himself of all these things, he chooses to, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified, suitable for the master's use. If he chooses to. Second Timothy. Verse 21. First John 3.3 3, If any man has this hope in him, he purifies himself. No adult requires another man to bathe for him when he's not sick. You don't want to smell on the street. Have a bath. First John chapter 3 and verse 3. Have a bath. Take a bath. Number two, engage the power of testimonies for your desired change of story. This man was this off. Jesus brought him back. Bring me back now. I'm ready for you. He has rescued professional harlots. Rescued arm robbers. One of my son in church here just came out of the prison for a robbery case that he was involved in. 
He met us there in the outreach. Surrendered his life to Christ. I never knew in my life. Today, destiny is decorated. Rescue. Marry. You have never jumped anybody's fence before. Your case is cheaper. Many of you don't even know what drug means. I mean, you never know it. Yeah. If this God can rescue someone from 23 years of affliction, he will rescue you. Yeah. He will rescue me. The righteous the testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding. Let me know what they did to get free, and I shall leave. Psalm 119, verse 144. Every testimony of the Lord is a pointer to our heritage. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. They are the rejoicing of my heart. Psalm 119, verse 111. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Revelation 12 and verse 11. Number three, engage the Holy Spirit to mortify the deeds of the flesh. For if ye walk after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. Romans 8.13. Jude verse 20, building yourself up upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost, not here. A room back at Athrodia, not here. This is not worthy of kings. By so doing, you are setting on fire the chaff of the work of the flesh. It's important to recognize that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, get to believe. Christ cannot be building mansions without being sure that people are coming there. I must be a man who will make it. You must believe that if Christ is building mansions, he knows the end from the beginning. So, there are people going there. Many have gone now. They are right there in heaven. I must make it. Believe in the reality and the possibility of a sanctified life. Believe in the possibility and the reality of a sanctified life. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. Our carnal arguments have brought us into carnality. Whenever we choose to repent, God is ready to forgive and to write off our unacceptable past. God is ever available to forgive. And when God forgives, he restores his favor. Others are doing no. No. Mind your stand with God. Mind your stand with God. Don't try to rewrite the Bible. Stop looking for different translations to find the one that's convenient for you. There are times people are reading the Bible, they just see one thing and they turn their page. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's the key to what you desire to get. Not a claw. This is an army of the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. And what will make a triumphant soldier is one that responds to the last command. Yes, sir. We better wake up. Mondu koru kome mache bajeo. Mondu katu pami ma jotiti. Mondu koru kome mache bajeo. Nuwe ye tumbelo ke oru. 
I'm striving for my lamp, my light not to go off. I'm striving for my name not to be removed from the book of life. It's a strife for every believer who desires to make it. I'm talking to all of us this morning, including myself, by the Spirit of God. Last Sunday, we dropped our desires. I dropped my own. I need help as much as you need help. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch out. The end is closer than we ever thought. Watch out. The end is closer than we ever thought. But by his grace. Paul said, by the help of God, I continue to this day. Every one of us in this race, the grace to continue till the end of time Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. As we close, cost of ungodliness, it blocks access to God's presence. which is the greatest asset of any believer. Psalm 101, number 7. He that walketh deceit shall not dwell in my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. It blocks access to God's presence, which is the greatest asset of every believer. Who shall I say of God? Psalm 15, verse 1 to 5. No access to his presence without commitment to living a sanctified life. Who shall stand in his holy place? On verse 4. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. There are conditions. That's another word, singing and shouting, enjoys his presence. This is the foundation that secures his ever abiding presence in our life. For two cannot work together except to be agreed. Number two, it blocks favor. It blocks access to divine favor. That shall compass the righteous about as with a shield. We saw that favor came upon Joseph in the prison, in Potiphar's house, and in Pharaoh's palace. Favor. Now, it's just untimely death. And they could break to me and about. In this money crazy world, John Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 10 and 11. I, the Lord, I saw the heart, I tried the reins even to give to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. As the ostrich seated on eggs and archer them not, so he that get a riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and at the end he shall be a fool. Even believers are saying, by all means, I must make it. Make what? Make what? Make what? Make what? Make what? Make what? I had a case here that ended in divorce. <laughs> this individual says, I'm done with this marriage, the man. What have you brought on board since we got married? But that lady has a lot in her, in her hand. A Christian. Marriage hit the rock by what one woman has that his wife does not have. Kenanwa. 
They say to someone, are you not a believer? I say, I'm not a believer. I'm not, I'm not a believer. I'm not. Now, can I tell you what? That shows the foundation. <laughs> you know, people say, when you believe, that you shall be saved. He went on to say, and he's, he preached to them the word of God that leads to salvation. Not just mouth talk, I'm saved, I'm born again, born again. Born again, don't do like this. Say, no, I'm born again. You don't know anything. I'm born again. I got some revelation now. What to God's destruction? Revelation gives life. Yes. No one here will run with his eyes opened into a trap. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your right hand and let's close. Please. Ask God for grace if you think you need it. Ask Jesus to do a new thing in your life. Lord, my heart is open. Come in. Do a new thing in my life today. Do a new thing in my life today. Do a new thing in my life today. Let every chain of evil fall off my life. Let every chain of evil thoughts lose their grip of me. Let every chain of evil hearts lose their grip of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. If God has reached out to you by his word in any form, give him a big hand of praise. Amen. Amen. Very quickly, this morning you are here. And you know that you know in yourself, by your knowing, that this thing called new birth has no imprint on your life. As a matter of fact, you can't even tell when it happened. It's never late to be right without a sure foundation of salvation, it will be a trial by error issue. You want your sins forgiven so you can be born again and experience the reality of new birth. I'd like to pray with you this morning. If someone else is here, you need to rededicate your life. You are once saved with amazing evidences. But suddenly, it no longer can be seen. Wherever you are, you want to dedicate your life, stand to your feet also. Everybody here that wants to be born again or want to dedicate your life, please stand to your feet. You want a brand new beginning, stand to your feet, wherever you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If anybody else is standing up, please do that quickly. We're going to pray right now. We are running out of time. Jesus, save my soul today. Forgive me my sins today. Grant me a brand new beginning today. God bless you. All of us standing, please bow your heads in a moment and pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. With your right hand lifted. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I may be justified. Today, I accept you 
as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm now justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Lord Jesus, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them into your kingdom. Let the same grace preserve them. Amen. I pray that none of these individuals will miss their steps to heaven. Amen. I pray that today will mark a new dawn in their life. Amen. Grace to live your commerce life, receive it right now. Amen. Grace to serve Jesus till the end, receive it right now. Amen. Grace to make heaven at the end of your journey, receive that right now. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations. 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 Please get seated. Now, fill up the slips given to you that will give us the privilege of remaining in touch with you for the furtherance of your faith. We are helpers of your joy. If you see anything anywhere soliciting for money from this church is fake. It's fake. We have never, we don't do it. We seek after people for their spiritual well-being. So feel free to let us have your details so we can be in touch with you for the things that will be of benefit to you and your life. Members of this church, please hear this. Anything you see posted by any devil saying that the church is asking for offering, not here. Not here, discard it by that devil to clear off your life. That's never happened. Never. Will never happen. Never. never. We have not had to beg once in 41 years. It's not now. Please watch out. Shiloh is coming, and those dangerous folks will start posting things. We've never taken an offering for Shiloh in this war. That Shiloh is coming, let's get ready. We are made smart enough by God's wisdom to know how to prepare for whatever needs to be done. Your church is putting up that heavy building which God is building. Yes, sir. Without you feeling a pinch. Yes, sir. Without me feeling a pinch. We are not carrying the burden of anybody. It's carrying our burden together. Jesus is carrying our burden together. Yes. So please give us your details. And you'll be glad you did. Be reminded of Believer Foundation class as announced during the announcement time. And secure a sure foundation for your faith. Anybody with that foundation has no future. Secure one. Online. You can decide to go on for the online version, but be serious about it. Don't look at it. That's why we advise you to be the one on ground. Yes, sir. You can concentrate. That's you are reading and saying, hello, hello? <laughs> I'm reading something. <laughs> All those people that don't gather at Shiloh, sir. Most of them, they don't hear one thought. It's true. They don't hear one thought. His two phones are in front of him. Yes, we're in Shiloh. We're in Shiloh. <laughs> Where are you in Shiloh? In my house. That long term. Yourself. You better make your way there. To return with the tables of the covenant. Yes, sir. That will make your life a covenant press button adventure. This is what I want. This is what it takes to get it. One, pam, pam. And then it shows up. Thank you, Jesus. Also, they are giving you a little card tagged, we love you. Take that card after this service to any of the new converse tent. The church has some gift items for you, for your edification. So branch up there and collect your portion. Shall we all stand, please? Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Lift up those two hands, everybody.
Set a great revival in my soul. Set a great revival in my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control. And set a great revival in my soul. I am powerless without you, Lord. I am powerless without you, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control. And set a great revival to my soul. Lift up your two hands. Call for the help of the Holy Spirit. He's the sanctifier. Call for the help of the Holy Spirit. Ye are sanctified by the Spirit of the Lord. He's a refiner's fire. Refine my spiritual life. Holy Spirit, refine my spiritual life. Holy Spirit, refine my spiritual life. Holy Spirit. Define my spiritual life. I don't want to not be a part of the crowd. I desire a personal dignified walk with you. Let today mark yet another turning point in my life. Let your fear rule my life from henceforth. Keep me hungry and thirsty after righteousness. Burn off every child of iniquity around my life. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Holy Spirit, you are God's refiner's fire. Sanctify and purify each one of us as gold. Yeah. Let every chain of evil that may have followed anyone to this service be broken off. Yeah. Good news is never late to be right. Yeah. Everyone that chooses to turn today, I see your redemptive dignity restored. that chooses to repent today, I see your redemptive dignity fully restored. Yeah. No one here shall lack a testimony. Yeah. Watch out. The impact of Shiloh shall be over tremendous in your life. Ibi ayo mi mo ni bi ti Jesu mi wa oju elese ko le ri ogo re In the precious name of Jesus each one of us will see his glory yeah. At next Sunday's annual Prishilo anointing service Jesus will finish his work for each one's full preparation for the encounters is out for us. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Is it clear the week of testimony? Amen. As God forgives, He releases His favor in your life. Amen. And favor, it will make you stand out. Amen. Whatever you have been longing for, every good thing you've been longing for will be delivered to you like a dream of the night. So shall it be. Yeah. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks. Yeah.